Show up and set in my super suit and be like, what are we doing? That guy hits that guy. Pow. Oh, yeah. So this is 10 years of comics. What? This, we're going to check out some comics of our own right now. So yep. we'll dive into some stuff. Let's check them out. Let's do it. Welcome back on a Tuesday, everybody. Collider Live in the motherfucking his house. Bizotch. Yeah, it's kind of where I wanted to go. <laughs> all right. Today. Good uh, work, dude. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Welcome I mean, back I to forgot, 1999. Forgot you're all in the room. <laughs> yeah. Every one of you are in the room. Uh, welcome back to Collider Live. It's it's nice to have everybody here. <laughs> Roxy Stryer. That's how, me. How are you? How are you? It's nice to see you. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Mark Riley. Hello. That hair is doing something special today. So it looks like so a wonderful landing hurt. strip for a uh, for a plane that would get lost in a field. And I like yeah, it, it would crash. Yeah, it would crash. It would crash and, but uh, it would be season two of Narcos when they land that plane and they... I remember, even though I've never seen it. Uh, <laughs> sure. Josh Makuga is hungover in here. Hello. I mean, How are you? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's good, man. Allergies. I, I oh, feel sorry. like... Oh, I that's feel, me. Yeah. So I shot WG in America yesterday and, and the, like, the hairstylist was like... I don't know what to do with your hair. I was like, I'm just going to shave my head. I think I might just start shaving my head. I think I'm done. What are you going to do with that? Stone Cold Steve Austin stuff? I think I'm going to start. Not like bug. You don't like the poof? Yeah, I hate the poof. I might, might, not like shave, but like go a one like every other day. Just one it. You What's that mean? It? Like yeah, just, yeah, just one, like yeah. what my beard looks it's like. Essentially, right now that this, my head. the side of his, a little shorter than the side of his head right now, would just be on the top yes. of his head. Just Why everything. doesn't your, the hairstylist know what to do with your hair? Because it's terrible. It's have poofing you seen up it? all over the place. And like, it's doing I new things. I just, I, I know I have male pattern bald, baldness. My dad's bald. My grandpa was bald on both sides. Like I know I'm going to be bald. Yeah. I'm holding on for dear life. I'm just like, screw it. Just, just trying to it. do some stuff. Yes. While it's still there, but uh, what's he, but I know what the biggest obstacle is. Starts with an A. Yeah. 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 She doesn't want it. Yeah. That's the that's because well, she doesn't want. Oh, no, 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 no. Here's why you can get away with it though, because I I've I've pitched the same thing. I was gonna I, I've always wanted to do it for a long time. Right. So I was like 17. So oh I, yeah. Because I used to have a buzz head all the time. You can do it because of the beard. Yeah. See, mine. I got. I'm too patchy. Mm. Um, you but, know what you got to do. This, what do I got to do? This what, what, you gotta do? what you got to do? This is what my dad. This is what my dad did to my mom because he Shaved wanted her head. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he had wanted to buzz his hair for a really long time, right. and so when when nine eleven happened, he was like, "Okay, I'm gonna buzz my hair until we find Osama bin Laden." <laughs> Like pre- already preparing that we were, do- <laughs> that like we were that not going test. to, right. uh, and then like five years in, he had conceded like we're never going to find him. This is great. I yeah. get to keep buzzing my hair. <laughs> and then they found not him. That did, they grow, did they grow it out? Once so they found when him? when they found him, she was like. Pay off. Right. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, now I can't. Yeah. Now it doesn't it's grow. Right. So over. you know, we missed uh, those ten missed years. The boat. Missed the boat. Yeah. So you got to pick an event. Yeah. And something that you're like pretty confident with. Right. Yeah. No, Boom. but something bigger, like yeah. okay. that. That this country's not gonna do. Like, right. oh, when when we impeach Trump or right. something, you know, you right. pick okay. something real far off. Sure. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, or let me when, tell you. when this microphone stops smelling like Jack Daniels. Oh, say right do that. Is it Jack Daniels? Yeah, I, I mean, can smell it. I think that's you your breath. I think, that, no, I think that's his breath bouncing off of the mic. No, no, no. Mic. I'm giving, the, our guests later, yes. you're like, oh, you're saying you're you're the one it, putting it. It's dude. coming off. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you're, getting, like, you're getting hammered. Did you get to shower or no? No, I showered. Yeah, yeah. Mm, right. Just in you. Just brutal. It's, what time yeah. did you stay up until? I was home at like 3.30. Look at oh, you. Oh, ouch. Let me, let me tell yeah. you something. And this, 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 I've been on a bender since Friday, dude. Okay, well, let me let me tell you something. God. Yeah. You and Brett, both on benders, you have said more in three minutes than he said <laughs> the entire show yesterday. <laughs> yep. But he, it's not even fair to call what he did a bender. Like, no. Josh, I'm sure, went on For, a he, bender. He's got, he's got two kids. What yeah. he did was a bender. Really? Yeah. Com- it was um, enough of a bender. It was a pub crawl. It wasn't what him. he did, but he, he went to... Or he had the kids were off with I don't know the mother in law or whoever, and he and his wife had a couple jumped, of drinks. Yeah, jumped yeah. a couple of bars, but he just it, he was done. I mean, and then he lost his phone yesterday. Oh so no! He didn't, well, he left it at home. Oh right. But he didn't have it, so he was. I mean, when I tell you, he was on another planet. He was so scattered. <laughs> I mean, you would have had a field day with this. He chemistry. literally said nothing. If I told you what has <laughs> happened, <laughs> he, said, said, he was he said nothing. He would he was I don't remember what the conversation was, but it was clearly something that he knew nothing about. And I think it was when the guests were on. And he was in the back, and I saw him. I was looking at him, and he was going like this. <laughs> 
nodding his head. Like, but and, I, and it's like, he was not listening to anything. He was just thinking about, if you went inside his head, you would have seen birds and squirrels and like cartoon like planes. <laughs> and his phone. Around. I and his phone. Right. He was worried about his yeah, phone Yeah, it a wasn't lot. nothing. It was fear. It was fear. And I said to him, are you okay? And he said, no. <laughs> No. He was, Please do it. Right. Someone, if I help yeah, me. someone if, posted that, that that Vincent Vega gif of him, oh, yeah. uh, like just <laughs> confused, like just bewildered, not yeah. know where he was. That was him the whole show. Uh, I, if I could tell you what has happened since 6 p.m. Friday until this moment right you? now, I mean, I don't know if we have enough show for what it. What was the Friday thing? Yeah. What did you guys so, do? What, yeah. So Friday night, you had, get this out of your system. I'm telling you, what did you pop out, kids? It's over. Uh, oh yeah, well this I know. Uh, so <laughs> so Friday had poker night with some buddies, and it just kept escalating until last night. Like it just kept going. Amanda's like, "Are you gonna come home?" I was like, "I don't, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. Like not not not." Not not coming home, yeah. just not in time for what I told. I was like, I'll be home by like ten thirty, and that never happened. Twelve fifteen. She's like, uh, ten thirty was an hour and a half ago. I was like, it's actually an hour and forty five. She's like, fuck you. <laughs> I gave, I gave her like the correct time. Oh God! Like, I was just smart ass and kind of back and forth. Uh, I I walked in the door and yeah. she picked up the pillow and went in the guest room and, oh, and I was like, so yeah. Ooh, this one of those nights. Yeah, like, exactly. Actually, actually mad or not actually mad? No, she was pretty pissed. Well, because it's Can't it's been anymore. since Friday, right. legitimately since Friday. So I went out Friday. She had like a girls' night on Saturday, and then I went right. out with my buddies. I'm like, I mean, I saw Tom. I went out with with Finstock oh, on, on Saturday you night. Gotta, you gotta bury, the, bury the lead. Well, because Amanda went out, and I, was, and I haven't I hung out with Tom, like, old school yeah, style and in a while. Pro- that's always problems. Who texted well, who? I texted him. And right. you said, do you want to hang out? And I said, out? what are you up to tonight? And he goes, let's get weird. <laughs> and, and so I met him in Burbank with a couple other buddies, and we went to, like, a bunch of different bars in Burbank, then, you know, ended up at home. And then Sunday, we had brunch with, like... This sounds like you've been caged up, and you just needed to get out. Yeah. It was one of those weekends. Yeah. But also, too, this is my first weekend in L.A. since Christmas, basically, because yeah. of, like, traveling and shows and all the kind of stuff that we've been up to, you know, whatever. Weddings, all you that kind of stuff. You want to kick back, relax, have a couple beers with the boys. Yeah. That's what you wanted to do. It escalated real quick. Yeah. Don't you want to, like... <laughs> for four days. Go to a spa <laughs> or, like, the beach and no. have a mojito. Mo- mojito? No. A mojito. My, my bo- Chicken like, and beer. Yeah. Sp- Spas, I don't. I, I spas make me feel real uncomfortable, and I'll tell you why. And so do strip clubs. I'm not a big strip club fan, but I've been to like three in the last four days. Oh, uh, right. because you know, like buddies come from out of town. They're like, "Oh, wife and kids are at home. Let's go to a strip club." I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to one of these because. And I'll tell you why strip clubs are upset me is because. You you guys know as gentlemen. I don't want you to get rid of that thing, by the way. What's on that? top of your head? I think it looks amazing. <laughs> it looks like it's ready to come alive and start dancing. I, you're, <laughs> you're joking though, but I actually like it. I'm not joking. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. I, I, it, it's such I a, it's like such part a, of your face. It's such a particular it's thing. Part of your it's such face. a particular thing. It is just it, it it's like looking at me, and I feel and I feel like I could take it off your head and it could hunt the squirrels for me. I, it just is goes. It, is it a head merkin? It looks amazing. Head I love it. I don't you dare touch. That thing. Okay. I love it. All right. I want to see what happens. How it evolves. You have to create like a Superman, not Superman, but a super Superman yeah, of yeah. all of you it's... guys. Like take Riley's nails and Makuga's hair. I don't no, know no, what no. we're pulling from Christian Wolverine. yet. Yeah, like, yeah. Make some kind of super version. <laughs> Sorry, man. I usually don't put up the nails. Gone wrong. Oh, it's fine. There you go. Uh, we can take wait, something what, from me too. <laughs> what were we talking My about? My sense of direction. No, yeah, 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 sense yeah. Direction. this weird furry thing with, with a lot of hair just like spinning your, in your circles. Your ability to invite yourself places. Yeah. 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 Okay, so wait, what were we you went about? to the strip club. Uh, you oh. went to the strip club. And, you had a Because here's the thing. You guys know this, and and Roxy, we before the camera started rolling, we were talking about some things. When guys go to bars, girls never talk to us, right? We just we don't we have to go and talk to girls. Okay, that's a thing. In the strip club, when, when you go to a strip club, oh, uh, girls talk to you. Right. And it's very uncomfortable. Hey, how are you? What's going on? Would you like something? And I know that they're working on tips, and that's a thing. Yeah. Right? But it's still very uncomfortable because yeah. I am terrible at saying no. I'm terrible. I'm terrible at peer pressure because, like, would you like a dance? Sure. Six hundred dollars right. later, I'm like, okay, well, did I you guess spend six hundred dollars. No, I'm how just saying. You, that's I spent no, mu- no dollars last well, night. Well, I asked so him. Here's oh. what happened. So. Friday night, uh, went out uh, poker night with some buddies, and you know when it's like guys' night, and somebody's like, "Yo, let's go to Vegas." I'm like, "I'm not, I'm not going to Vegas." Everybody's like, "We're doing Vegas." We got to the private jet strip 
at Van Nuys Airport. This, you guys were this gonna was Friday go, night. You were going to go yeah. to Vegas? Holy and, shit. And the pilot said, we can't take off until 3 a.m. And we're like, okay, then we're not going. Right. We got the Uber out of there and then made our way back to Hollywood. That was now, close. Now, listen, a lot of my friends have a lot more money than I do. But wait a minute here. This is what you're – you're leaving out a lot of facts. Yeah, because sure. One of well, the, I will one, say this. Like, you, you think that fight – with you walking in at twelve thirty would have went went bad. Yeah. You go to Vegas. Wait till I had a text. Was permission asked at any no, point? No, no, no. I had a text ready <laughs> that just said, "Babe, going to Vegas. Sorry, I had it prepped." You're asking for problems. I, I know this. Yeah. I just listened to the afternoons. She yeah. was on. She was on. You're playing with fire. I man. know this, and I, so. We, I think you're. Wait, rebelling. why? What happened on the afternoons? She called in. And yeah, because gave him the business. Was she, yeah. was she pissed off? Well, because last week is in Pittsburgh, and we had, like I'd had a few too many drinks at both the like the pre-wedding Uh-oh. party and the wedding party, and like you know, it was a fascinating like, conversation. I know you call me therapist a lot. Of I heard that. I heard that line, <laughs> and I like that line. Um, but yeah, Christian going, Harleff, MD. What's going on with you? You're Doctors rebelling. In. You're rebelling Doctors a little in. bit. No, no, I'm not. I'm not rebelling. <laughs> it was. It was just one of those I, weekends where it just kept going. Yeah. Because okay, so Friday night was with the dude. And then a man had a bachelorette party, and I was like, "Well, if she's going out, I'm going out." Right, right. And then Sunday we had a really nice day together and whatever. And then last night, my buddy from college came into town. And I just told her, "I was like, listen, this is one of my peer pressure buddies. It's going to be a later night." And then it just kept going. It's one of those things yeah. where he's one of my buddies that just escalates quickly. We called him the wolf in college because <laughs> when like the night would start going, you just hear like a. Okay. And like it would just go. No. So you're sending like the wolf? If I send am, the wolf. I don't yes. feel like Jesus. anything's happening. I feel like this is always inside of right, Josh. Right. And what's happening is when he's not doing this. That's him being like, don't do it. Don't he's do it. He's holding back the beast. And but, Amanda knows. Yeah. yeah she, she knows. Hundred, well, yeah, it's not like you lied to her when you no, met her. No, she, no. It was very clear. Like, this is part of, I've yes, known you for like yes. six, seven years the, now. And like, the this man's is, nickname is the wild man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for a good reason. Yeah, but right. but it's part of why she fell in love with you. So I feel like she can get annoyed with it because you're not coming home. And this home. doesn't happen all the time. Like, no. This happens like no. every few months. Well, that's what I mean. But here's, but here's a couple things here. This is a conversation that Josh and I did not have on the air. We had it years ago, and just because we can smell our own. And mm-hmm. I, this is I, for a lo- for a long time, I was very similar to what, what he was doing. I couldn't even imagine. It seems like a different planet these days, but I can relate to it. So while and I knew him while he was on Schmoes, the the just the lunatic, the the, the full fringe lunatic, mm-hmm. and he was he was a, a maniac, and he would tell me never getting married. Never happening. I said, "Yeah, I remember when I said that." <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was, and he's like, "No, no, no, no I'm telling you, I'm just not." I'm like, "You'll find the person, and it'll happen." He's like, "Nah, I'm, I'm telling you, I found a lot of people that I've been into. You'll find the person." Fast forward, he's married, right? Here's my conversation to you again, right now, but this time it's on the air. All right, your wife is gonna say enough is enough. And, but, and, and, here, and here's what's well, gonna, she said enough is enough a bunch no, no, no. of times. But there's a way to say it. There's a way to say it, and then you're just gonna be like. Let's have that baby. Because once you have the baby, so this, it's that be- shit ain't happening. So it's the conversation before enjoy- the baby? My advice is go to fucking Vegas quick. <laughs> <laughs> and do it. You should have gotten oh, a yeah. fucking plan. Well, so we, so to <laughs> my one buddy. Good advice, yes. Christian. Good advice. <laughs> so my one buddy is a member of a country club here in L.A. And yeah. we got the private room for poker night, right? And all of us dressed up in suits. And the, the clientele at this country club is, you know over 60 like all the cougars were just loving us we walked in we're playing cards and Joe Pesci walks in see the... women talk to you yeah older women Joe Pesci yeah. walked in and you Joe... were in Vegas well, no we were at the country club oh, the here country in LA club, Joe Pesci walks into the club and he looks at the eight of us and he's like what is this a fucking fashion show look at these fucking guys and he just kept watching like kept walking that's right? the best thing it was ever. one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me did and, you, you know, get to respond no quick response not, all of us just laughed and then we all were like Joe Pesci just <laughs> called Joe yeah it's really holy really um, shit it's great we were at this risotto bar having dinner you know, before the poker game and there was no risotto left in the pan and Pesci was going <laughs> <laughs> slamming his like, hand on the and, and me and the other guys were like I don't think we say anything it's no you Joe don't Pesci. say a word he's just gonna he's, grab a knife go yeah, around to the shit you motherfucker you, you motherfucker <laughs> you make that <laughs> fucking <laughs> risotto you <laughs> motherfucker you fucking shite <laughs> box you fucking <laughs> He's uh, like, ah, it's Friday night, it's Joe. Yeah, that's that's what happens. Oh, well, listen, yeah. thank you. Again, like I said, you you, you gave three three <laughs> episodes worth of conversation as opposed to the one conversation. That I, did you just get drunk from my breath there? Yeah, yeah I, I got I got a shot. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna, definitely I will a say shot. This. Yes. I I, I want to talk to the creators of Cobra Kai, mm-hmm. but I also don't want to offend them by how much I smell like alcohol. Oh, so we're gonna talk to them. Look, these guys, these guys. The, by the way, the creators of Cobra Kai are coming in a little later. There. I, I'm privileged enough to say that they become buddies. You know, yeah. it's like his, like I said yesterday, Josh or two days ago, Josh is um, her, his kid Mikey went to school. Oh, one nice. One too. And I didn't know that. Yeah, and they're um, wow. And, and yeah. You guys were on the wow. same pickup 
We Jesus. were. And we would shoot the shit. And, and like, it was funny because we after I had interviewed him for one-on-one and we talked for a bit. And um, then I would see him at the yard and we would just kind of get into conversations. But then I couldn't help myself. I, we'd talk about, and he loves talking about Cobra Kai anyway because, it's like I said, it's not just a gig for these guys. They love it. It's their Star Wars. you know. Yeah. So And you'll see that. When, when they're, all three of the guys are coming in today, Hayden, John, and uh, Josh, and we're going to talk to them uh, about season two. Because Martin Cove just told us a little stuff. These are the guys that these are the guys. I mean, I, the reason that the show is on the air. I posted that picture on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, yeah. and I saw a buddy I hadn't seen in a long time on Saturday night. <laughs> Bless you. And he Bless pulled you. me aside. He was like, "Tell me about Crease." Yeah, right. Yeah. And I was like, "Dude, to be honest with you, it was probably a highlight of my life it was sitting here with that dude for thirty minutes, and he gave us the interview. And I don't want to offend anybody, but he gave us the interview that I wanted from John Claude Van Damme. Oh, right. Like, that's what I wanted to hear from Van Can Damme. I like, tell, tell you how mad I am at you guys. <laughs> oh, the Martin Cove was here. I know. Listen, well, jo- and, okay, you had two Roxy Stryer guests while I was gone. Who was the other one? One from Shazam and one from Cobra oh, yeah. Kai. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, are you kidding? Yell yeah. at him. It just feels rude. Yell at, yell at him. <laughs> yeah, no, because when I uh, scheduled them, I made sure. You you weren't here. It right. does feel like that. It wasn't like, their schedule right. just well, kind of locking into I those don't days. I to say I'm entitled to, mm-hmm, but, but I'm not not. Same. So. <laughs> well, yeah, his, his schedule just, uh, unfortunately, just kind of, uh, we wanted him on for a little longer, but it's just, it, it was that the hour show. But what I will tell you about Martin Cove, besides being the coolest guy on the planet, and this adds into him being the coolest guy on the planet afterwards, like he, he hung out for an hour. Listen, a lot he of guests. Did. Yes. We lot, talked for a while. A you lot guys of took guests. a dope picture together. I know. Like, oh, he, a lot of guests come except in here. For Christian. Did you see Christian's pose in the one picture I took? That was like this. And I have, I just want, I, I, it doesn't matter because that normally I'd be mad. I took like 20 pictures of him because he yeah. wanted to take it. Uh, yeah, it wasn't, it, it, he was taking pictures of everybody. And the thing is, a lot of times guests come in, they take one picture and then they're gone. Fucking yeah. Gone. He was, he was sitting around talking, asking more questions. Petting what did the dog? He played with my dog yeah. for like 30 yes. minutes. Your yeah. dog, what, you brought your dog in while I'm I was in here? Yeah, yeah, I made sure you weren't here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then, and then, <laughs> but the best was, so, so Mike, Cit- <gasps> Mike Citizen, who is um, Tom's partner. Yeah. On Still Little don't Bobby understand him Jews. at all. Can't get a sense in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, couldn't get a read His on him. His hair was confusing. <laughs> <laughs> he does that on purpose. But anyway, so he tells me. So he he he's a huge Karate fan. Yeah, a Karate Kid fan. Like it's like it's his, it's his movie. It's like his Rocky. And he was like, "That was the best interview ever." And I told Martin Cove, "I'm like, my buddy was really excited. He's like, he's like, what's his name?" And I was like, "Well, we called him the Jersey Devil in yeah. uh, in, in you know for boxing." And he goes, "So we shot something. I'm I'm sitting there telling Mike on in video." And he goes, hey, you hear off the side, where's the Jersey Devil? <laughs> and he turned, and he turned to Martin Cove and he's like, I heard the Jersey Devil was going to be here, but there was no Jersey Devil. And he's doing this whole video. And then I sent it to Mike and Mike was like, I'm 12 years old now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it was mean, great. He's a fantastic, fantastic There wasn't guy. any screenshots taken of the like this, the, the grin on my face as Martin Cove was talking. Because every time he just, I was like, well, go on. Yeah, right? I was mad at myself, though. Cause someone, someone told me, um, said something to me. And I was like, how did I not ask that? Hmm. I didn't ask him one Rambo. question about Rambo. Yeah, I didn't ask him one question about Rambo. I, I was gonna say something Rambo, but he was on such a yeah. role Terror, that I yeah. just I was you know I was, it was like when I was I, hey Van Dam you like Pittsburgh he's sudden death and that was I that wasn't was gonna do it about Rambo. He's coming back though because of Martin Cove. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, he, he, he is the best. He's like, he told he says to me he's like we should go have a beer sometime like <laughs> I will I will pull a Vegas. I'll go to, yeah. uh, you know, the, yeah. if my wife was like, where are you? I'm out with Sense Increase. Don't worry about it. Don't worry it. about it. Are you kidding yep. me? Uh, yep. But yeah, so it would, it would be like, but I told him, I said, he's shooting some movie right now. He's telling me what the movie he's doing. But he said, once he comes back, that guy is 72, by the way. 72? Doesn't look good. Wow. He looks 50 years old. Wow. My dad is 70. My, my, my dad, dad looks, looks 70. 70. Yeah. My dad looks, my dad, I mean, I love him. Yeah. But my, he looks, my dad's been through the shit. And like Martin like, Cove. Martin Cove, I saw him when I met him. I go, you look younger than I did. Yeah. And he's, and he's like, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, I, he, what a good, what a when good When he dude. did this, when he talked about only oh, yeah. when the first time they yeah, let yeah, him yeah, do yeah, this, yeah. and he went like this, I was just like, ah! like yeah, I got hands, so yeah. excited. It was awesome. So yeah. Did you like the interview? Yeah, whatever. Oh, <laughs> Roxy Stry. You should Roxy. tell us if you liked the interview. Did yeah, it was, like it was really good. But you because of him, not us. It. Yeah, right. exactly. Makes sense. Yeah, um, you know, speaking of Vegas, by the way, this is this is something I, I, I don't know if I'm proud of this or deeply embarrassed about it. So the other day, I, my, my daughter, we're, we're sitting on the couch, and she says to me, she pulls out these cards, and she goes, Dad, I have this trick I learned in school. I want to play this game. She's playing this game, and I go, that's not a game. I go, let's play blackjack. <laughs> <laughs> so I teach my seven-year-old how to play blackjack, right? And, she, and As one does. And she 
loves it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and she, How did you preface it? Were you like, this is an adult game? Not yet. Not yet. But it, it it's a fun game mm-hmm. if you take away the gambling so you aspect. Said, well, right? like but, but you just want to hit 21. Just wait. Okay. Okay. Because it, it, this is it, you're going to be in you're going to be in hysterics by the end of this story. Um. So, so the it's the best is so then she starts learning it right and then I'm like you know I'll, I'll, I didn't even think about it I'm like, I need to get a blackjack app on my phone I don't mm-hmm. have one. So we're playing it and my daughter's is like should we take in turns and now we are playing for you know that you could you get you coins and chips yeah. and sort of two and she sees that I have it and she goes. And so she plays one, and I tell you know because the dealer's showing a two. You're you're, you're supposed no she sh- no she, if, if the dealer's showing a oh oh yeah the yeah, dealer's yeah. showing a two you stay sure yeah so I'm like I'm like you want to stay in this one and it, it and wind up getting like to twenty she's like I'm not listening to you anymore I'm losing all my money <laughs> and so so welcome that, yeah. yeah so then welcome she, to Vegas so then she decides you know a little bit and then she downloads downloads the app on her iPad oh, and boy. she starts playing blackjack I'm like all right this now we're getting intense. So I'm Did Sadie find out about this yet? Did you yeah. tell her? So we're barbecuing. Wait, wait. So we're barbecuing on Sunday. We're barbecuing on Sunday. And I come back in and she's playing blackjack with my mother in law. <laughs> and my mother in law's like, ah, I don't understand. And I go, You've never played blackjack? You're like 75. She's like, Never heard of it. I've mean, never heard of blackjack. <laughs> I mean, how have you never heard of blackjack? So, so sitting there, I'm playing. So I'm so I now become the dealer. I'm playing the dealer with my seven year old and my seventy five year old mother in law, and they're playing. And now my daughter goes, "Let's get the Monopoly money." And she gets the Monopoly money, throwing down hundreds of five hundred. Yeah. And then I go, "All right, I, I, we're playing." And my my mother in law starts to get into it, and she's starting to bet my, safely. My seven year old goes. I'm all in, Dad. He puts in 900 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, this is risky. This is risky. She loses it. Oh, She's no. fucking pissed. Yeah. <laughs> she reminds me Welcome of every, to Vegas. She reminds me of every person I ever went to Vegas with. Yeah. She's taking some, and you How hear, much is this worth? Put it, put it in. You, you, put hear, it in. you hear her scream at one point. She's like, all right, all right. Look, Mom, I'm just mad. I lost the black <laughs> And I told her, I said, Bibi, you got to delete the app off. I said, I said, it's a blackjack is an adult game, so yep. we had to get rid of it. But I was just—I you got rid of the app. I got rid but of the you app. You did it. I absolutely did it. I absolutely. Dude, did that it. app's coming back. You opened Pandora's <laughs> box, man. That's like, coming back. I turned my daughter into into oh. fucking uh, Nicholas Cage. You want, a, you want a number for gamblings and anonymous? Oh, what did Sadie say to you? Was she like, "What?" No, she didn't really pick up on it too much. Too, but it was like, but the fact that they were betting a monopoly, it was. And to watch my mother-in-law just go through these circles in her head, like, yeah. "Do I hit on a six? <laughs> there yeah. they are." Oh. God, it was amazing. We, my little nephew, who is, I think, the same age, oh, like a year younger than mm-hmm. than your daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, we used, we introduced him to fantasy football, right? Me and my brother, and we played DraftKings, which is you know, like your daily fantasy, right. and you can start gambling. And Luke, not a sponsor, yeah, is not it, a was sponsor. That a live read? No. And so we introduced him to to the fantasy football, and he comes up to me. It's like week four or five of the NFL, and he FaceTimes me, and he goes, Uncle Joshy, what do you think of Antonio Brown or Julio Jones? And I'm like, for what? He's like, well, I can get 2500 for Antonio Brown or 2800 <laughs> right. for Julio Jones. And I'm like, I would go Julio. He's like, I feel like he's going to get the touchdowns in the wed zone. And then he ends up. How old up, is he? Six? Amazing. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm awesome. saying. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, you should, you should have seen, you should it's have amazing. seen, you should have seen this. It was incredible. You guys are screwed. I know. Totally. And, and also know. after the head. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's like, like what no. happened to like G.I. Joe and like right? dolls. Out the window. You're, you're in apps. Legos. That's what happens. You so My Little apps. Pony. Polly Pocket. Yeah. No. Yeah, you're not even Jenny, dolls. Who's, even Jenny, who's three, is like, I want to be a princess. I want to be a princess. And then we're playing basketball and she's like, she's like, Bowling. I'm gonna go inside and play cards. And I'm like, I was interviewing Faith Herman, who is the little girl in Shazam. Oh yeah, uh, the one who's really, really talkative. Yes. That's on This Is Us, and I, she she's said adorable. she was she's adorable. And she turned to me and she was like, "Yeah, I'm on the group text thread with the rest of the Shazam kids," and I was like, "You have a cell phone?" <laughs> and every person in the room, her publicist, her mom, her friend. All, all, everybody in my panel started laughing. They're like, "You know nothing about children." Yeah, she's like six years old. Yeah. They I'm, all. I'm not. I'm not giving. Yeah, Mike. Mike. They all started nephew, laughing, laughing at me. 13, my dad she was too. like, "I have an iPad, yeah, a too. cell phone. I'm on the text chain. I do this. My mom There's, helps me with my social media." No, I was no, like, "We have we have rules." Well, we have she's rules. also a star. 
Totally, True. but she has a cell phone. No, no, no. See, yeah, I mean, no, no, no. Gotta call her agent. Yeah. No on, <laughs> that's a no on me. Uh, yeah, no. When, my brother and sister law are real tight on that. I think around the the eleven or twelve. Probably. My brother said thirteen. But yeah. she, she's a teenager. She that was phone. me because yeah. bat mitzvah season. Yeah, that's what I'll do because they cross bat mitzvah season. Even, even like the yeah. iPad, like the iPad, and and all this stuff that she, the, all of that stuff. It's a matter of. In the morning, I'll Access. let her weekend. I'll let her play in the morning. On the you know, and she gets a little screen time when she gets home. But she's not like like my nephew. My nephew is just plugged, oh, he's plugged to this thing. He doesn't move. Yeah, I'm like that, that's not that's, no. that's not yeah. what I'm doing. I'm not doing that with my kids. So I and we just have uh, so she's just that screen Jack time. Black. And then she, and she reads. She plays blackjack. Black Jack. And she reads. It's good that she yeah. reads. Yeah. But that was my important. but that was the thing is like she has all these games like these Disney games and things she plays and she's obsessed with them and like like block uh, Minecraft or yeah. and I'm like okay I, she I, plays I, Minecraft. Yeah, the block craft is the is like the younger version. Oh. Of it. So then I I'm like okay, so I'm expecting her to see that, and I see her flipping cards and doing 21. I'm like, all right, we gotta get rid of this. <laughs> thing. And, she, and she goes, she goes, Dad, I'm up eight thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have her get solitaire. I know that's the jam. Uh, I play solitaire every single do you? night. For, do you guys? Yeah. So you just said every Minecraft. Do you guys yeah. remember? And we're definitely aging ourselves. Do you guys remember Minesweeper? Yes. On duh. the PC. Duh. Are you kidding? I was amazing no, at this. I wait. always I knew where they were. I still to this day have I'm no idea how to play that game. I can teach you, and I am unreal at that. I, I, like, I, unreal. There was like Ellis at Tetris, unreal. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes, because Minesweeper to this day, if a pod, I'm like, I, I can't yeah. do that. But I had savant friends like you there, that were you gonna. You know where I? Well, there's things that people can do and they can't do the other, like things that I could never do. Rubik's cube. Find your way to Burbank. Right. True facts. Yeah, that's true. Today was tough too. Uh -oh, I also, what'd you do today? So last night, well, this is a, <laughs> this on. isn't a directional one, more of a get one in your I, car. This is this was like. <laughs> do you guys ever have this thing? I it's no. probably different. Not yes. not just well, maybe uh, maybe not. I. I'm working 100 hour weeks. I'm exhausted and I have to be on all day with everybody I'm with. So sometimes when I call my dad, I just start like crying or freaking out. <laughs> and I make him feel like the biggest piece of shit. He's 3,000 miles away. I'm like, I don't know where I am. <laughs> so I was lost. My phone was at 1%. And I had a flat tire last night. Oh, Jeez. Um, no. And so Do you have a cord in your car? And it was like, I did have a cord in my car, but I was I had pulled over because it wasn't flat like a hole. It was flat like no air. Mm. So I pulled over to the gas station to try to. Do you have AAA? Um, Mm -hmm. Whatever. Uh, so I pulled in the. That's I, a no, Jeff. I, I did. I haven't paid up on my bills for oh. it because my dad got mad at me for having it because w in the 80s they were against uh, having the speed limits on the highways. It's a whole effing thing with my family. Oh, right. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Though. Everybody's got their thing. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's a ridiculous thing. But, but does he know that you can't find your way to your kitchen? Yes, for sure. But <laughs> okay. I also am somebody who From changes. The kitchen? I can right. change my own tire. Like. <laughs> From the kitchen. From my kitchen to the kitchen. Very funny, guys. Where's my sink? <laughs> oh. So I, but I'm usually pretty good. Like, I have changed multiple tires of my friends, mine. Like, but I was at this gas station, and I was trying to put air in my tire, yes. and I just couldn't. Like, I couldn't figure it out. My phone's on 1%. My car's off because I'm trying to put the air the in. cap. Okay. I don't even have caps anymore because oh. some rascals oh. took my caps. Oh, so. no. so fucking squirrels probably. Yeah, 100%. Bastards. But the gauge isn't coming out. So I can't th see when my car hits the 33 because the gauge is stuck, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm scared I'm going to pop a tire and it's pitch black out. So And it's so late at night. And I'm in the middle of who knows where. So I don't like this. I don't, so I, 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 I don't, so I don't like face, you out in the middle of nowhere no. with a darkness. I, I FaceTime no. my dad and I'm like, Dad! And he said, dad. I can't see you. It's dark. <laughs> yes. And he was like, go into the light. I'm like, there is no light, Dad! And I'm right. stuck in the middle of nowhere, and I have no car. Like, and he's it's nice like, to say very loud in the middle of the yeah. door. Yeah, it's just go like, went to the light. Right. I went to the light. Yeah. I, I, and he's Polter just guys, like, go to the light, I can't see anything, and I have ten thousand dollars <laughs> cash in my pocket. So he's like, he's like, you have to help me a little more than that. Like, I can't help you when I don't know what's going on. I'm like, the gauge, the gauge. It's just like rocks. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to figure this one out by yourself. Ooh, and I, move. I just lost it on him. Uh -oh. I was like, "Don't you dare hang up the phone on me, Dad!" Like, like a little kid. Like, like Veruca I, Salt. I, well, I don't know if that happens, you guys, but I, I, want I don't freak feast. out. And, yeah. Like, I just had lost it, and I was yeah. scared, and I was alone, and so. And, and then you're reminding yourself, you're like, oh, and I'm super single and out here, like, and nobody's coming to call? help me. No, he did not get a call. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. So <laughs> so my dad's like, you got to figure this out. That needs to be his ringtone for you, by the way. <laughs> so I'm like. FaceTime's bad. <laughs> well, the person worse than cars is me, worth 
worse with cars than me is bad. He oh. has no idea what he's doing. Yeah. Not. Good that you guys got together. I could change yeah. his tires. Like yeah. he, right. no idea. He does have AAA. Uh, probably. He should have. AAA. I do have it. It's just not. I can't talk about it. Oh. All right. All right. <laughs> so whatever. So I end up. I'm. I'm like, all right. I just got to start approaching. Brought to people. you by AAA and DraftKings. Yeah. So I start, <laughs> right. I start approaching Clutter people life. that could pull oh, into the gas good. station. So they pull in, and I'm like. Hey, can I ask you a question? And like, it looks like I am a homeless beggar, like, I, or also a prostitute, but, or a prostitute. Uh, probably based on the way I was dressed, more like the prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you coming from? Uh, work. Oh, uh, work. Okay. And, but like, photo shoot work, so not like blazer work. Right, right. <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure it out. And every time I approach somebody, they say, "Yeah, yeah, I can help you." And then they are coming over. They're taking air out of my tire. I'm watching my tire get more and more flat. <laughs> I'm you don't there. know how to put the air in the tire? I do, I, but that's what I thought. This thing was broken. No. The thing is broken. The air's broken. It's not working. And obviously, you're putting quarters in. I'm like, I'm like a helpless lamb. So finally, I'm like, I'm just going to go home. Like, I'm going to drive this thing home. Hopefully, I make it there. And I'm going to wake up at 6, and I'm going to go to Valvoline because I don't right. know how to do this. And I get to Valvoline this morning, and I'm just so defeated. And the woman looks at me, and she's like, we don't usually – do that unless you're getting another service done because like that, <laughs> that's no, for free and I'm like well, I have to be at Collider Live and she oh. looks at me and she says what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like listen lady I don't have time for this right now right. like don't make me do to you what I did to my father <laughs> she was like I have no idea what the words are coming out of your mouth I'll just put some air in your tires <laughs> there ma'am. It is. I was like yes wow. like one victory sometimes people one are nice. victory sometimes, sometimes. You know, one or, or just annoying want to get chatted yeah. off totally. I yeah. just needed the well, one good. thing I like that story thank you for telling us well, um, no, no, Roxy, don't do it again okay just yeah. you can text me uh, i have a triple a card I'm i can just, i can send them she has to one too she's not using i don't know i can't talk we about can, it. i know you can't talk about it you can give me code what do you mean you can't talk about it why can't you tell me just about it? Like just a big family issue we have the, yeah so they your whole family listens to this show they have just they have beef they have beef with triple a there's like a whole triple a problem like so what like like competing business or something no no you no. can't talk about it. It's like <laughs> it goes back to the eighties. Like oh. we're we are sworn to not have AAA. Like we could not have AAA. <laughs> Is there like a secret society against? <laughs> yeah. But you've already AAA said you do have quadruple A. Whatever, I don't have it. Oh, you don't I don't have it. I don't not right, have fine. it. Fine. Okay, listen. I do not. Not story, have it. Mark. I thought yeah. that I like had tr- I had not. I don't, that's the wrong word. About yeah. I thought I had trained my wife to change a tire. That's the wrong word to say. I thought I had taught no, my wife to change a tire, to put air in it, to like check her oil, to do all the things, to jump her car all that stuff when we first got together i was like this these are things you need to know she can change her own oil well i, mean, I can change my own oh, oil. really yeah, but that you shouldn't do, do that like, yeah you, you i got sh- my car getting the oil change right now yeah but you should like I'm i shouldn't change it. my oil no. you the people that are professionals should change your oil because there's always something that goes wrong if I you have yeah. nothing to do with any of that correct you're Especially right, mine, You're right. mine's that god freaking damn expensive oil that's their job it's a hundred effing yeah. dollars my job is to tell should be about jokes. 60 to 100 bucks it, because it's the yeah. nonsense that whatever the other one is because you have a german car you freaking German right, screwing the Jews we again. Have, we have like a half an hour to, to cover happening. some shit because we <laughs> have guys coming in. But you had something you wanted to hey, say? Did, is Zach Efron going to be Wolverine? Is that, is that a thing? Yeah. Is that a thing? I don't know. Or was that an April Fool's joke yesterday? I think, yeah. I think yeah. April, April Fool's. Fool's. What was yeah. the joke? The joke was uh, Wolverine you, getting rebooted in Avengers Sorry, Endgame. what was the training end of that joke? It was not a joke. You trained but your wife. April Fool's. Oh, no, no, no. She called me. She's like, I'm in a dress. Join AAA. So I had to join AAA in like two minutes and then send a AAA guy there. Right. All right. Anyway. Well, there you but, go. So was it an April Fool's joke? Was the yeah, Zach yeah, Efron thing? Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, Did any of you guys get fooled? No. But I, I got fl- my mom real I, good. I got a lot of people last night really? on the show. Well, on the show. I got a lot of people with the thing thing. Oh, you told, got me. Did you, I don't know if you heard it. I told mm. everybody that I actually watched the thing, and everybody oh, believed it. But, nice. but Riley, guess good what one. I actually did watch last night? The thing. Oh, what? he's a liar. Not the thing. thing. No, it's not the thing. Not so, a liar. No, no. I, you know what? I love. I'm. I'm just sitting here bored. Saw, now. I, I'm like, what? Yeah. No, no, no. I saw some fan uh, tweeted out. He's like, "Can Christian please stop with the guess what I watch? It's getting old. I'm gonna do it every what fucking day. What is it? What did you watch? Every day. Uh, last night I watched uh, WWE Raw. I watched. Okay. But not. Thank you. <laughs> not. Not the. Not the whole. Not the whole thing. I, I skimmed through a lot of it, and I saw. What I have not seen from wrestling since I was a fan back in the Ar- Attitude Era, which was the Vince Stone Cold McMahon's Steve face in a butt. No, but mm. Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock during those days. That was like that was like there was the Golden Era with Hogan and Savage, everything. Then then it went into the Attitude Era, which was again another Golden Era, but with uh, these great wrestlers and the shit that they were doing during the Attitude Era, like during the like the little post scenes and the stuff that we do for like show now, but like it's just incredible. 
So la- I haven't seen anything like that since I've been watching again. Last night, I'm going to, you know, so if you haven't watched Raw, then you should cancel it. You should not uh, listen to this because it's a spoiler. This was a lot of fun. So they, they, had the, they had Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, who are the three women who, for the first time, main eventing WrestleMania has never happened before. Three females. And it's next weekend, too, right? It's, it's this Sunday, yeah. This Sunday. And, and so Charlotte Flair won the SmackDown Championship. And then, you know, Ronda Rousey's the Raw champion. All the belts are going to be on the line. It's going to be a big thing. So last night, they were going to do a uh, three woman tag match. So all three of those women have to be on the same team against these other three women. But the stipulation is if any one of them hit each other or anything, then they're disqualified and they can't be in the match. So I was like, oh, that could, this could be fun. We'll see what happens. So they're they're doing it, and like each they're definitely we're not working as a team, but they're not fighting. Are you watching each other. this live? I was watching this live last night. Yeah. Oh. So and then so, well, with, with not, not live because I guess I guess it's aired because uh, I guess it airs you know on the East Coast. Yeah, first, yeah. So. But you're watching it. No, no. We, I watched a little. The, she watched a little bit of the Voice, okay. and then I so I was caught up. So I will close say this. I mean, it would be more pissed if I watched Raw than showing up last night at three thirty in the morning. Oh, well, that's fair. <laughs> but li- but listen. So so Funny. anyway. So this fight. So they're they're wrestling, and then Ronda Rousey is not getting in there. Becky Lynch is doing the majority of it. She's the the really popular one. Ronda gets in there, taps this girl out within seconds. Right. Jumps up and punches Charlotte Flair in the throat, <laughs> right? And, and all hell breaks loose. And I'm like, this is amazing. So they're t- they're they're tackling each other on the floor. And then Becky Lynch comes in, jumps on top of her. I'm like, this is a, this is incredible. And it and it's this is like and it looks like this again. It reminded me of Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, and like The Undertaker just kind of sure. going at it. And they're and they're pouring on top of each other, throwing bombs. And then the fake security team comes out, like a bunch of them. And they pull back on Rhonda, and, they, and they, she puts her hands up, and she's okay. And then Becky Lynch is on the other side, right? So Rhonda goes right through them. Uh, no, then then the fa- oh, they, sorry, they beat the shit out of all the security people mm-hmm. first. They beat the crap out of them. Then they're, they're, kick, they're kicking them, punch doorman, right. doorman. Yeah, they're kicking them, punching them in the face, doing all this. Then the fake cops come. That's okay. what happened. And then they pull Rhonda <laughs> onto the side, and Rhonda's got her hands up. Becky Lynch is in the corner, and Rhonda runs through, knocks over one of the cops, and punches Becky Lynch. They throw her in the corner, and they put handcuffs on her. Right. Nice. And then as she's sitting there handcuffed, Becky Lynch breaks through and kicks Ronda in the face. Right. <laughs> they arrest Becky Lynch. So now Becky Lynch has gotten arrested, Ronda Rousey's gotten arrested, and they're screaming at each other and they're both in Where's handcuffs. Where's Charlotte Flair? Charlotte Flair's outside of the ring at this point, okay. just kind of hands up. So then they they're bringing Ronda up the ramp. Charlotte Flair runs in and kicks Ronda in the face again, right? <laughs> they they handcuff Charlotte Flair, and Charlotte Flair's like, do you know who I am? I'm Ric Flair's daughter. And screaming. And then they handcuff all three of them. You think, well, that that's incredible on sure. itself. They're screaming and yelling at each other. Ronda's trying to break out. They're all trying to break out. You're like, okay, this is this is this is this was fun. Then they get <laughs> to the back. And now they're in the back, and the cops are putting them in the cars, right? And they're putting them, each of them in the cars. Separate cars. Separate cars. And they're putting them in each in separate cars, and they're screaming at each other, trying to kick each other, whatever, too. So this is the silly and, and amazing part at the same time. They stick Rhonda and Becky in the same car. <laughs> As you do. Right. They start sure. kicking each other, right? <laughs> Rhonda kicks the glass out of the car. Jesus. Right? Then they then they It's a pretty good kick. It was it, they pull the glass, then they pull Becky out, then they kicking each other, rush <laughs> Becky and Charlotte are they're cuffed, kicking at one another. Awesome. They throw her into the they throw them into the car and then Rhonda sticks her face out for a second like you mother, and Charlotte Flair kneads her in the face. Her head bounces off the side of the car. She goes and Rhonda some of this before even that happens. Rhonda grabs is steering the car somehow and <laughs> crashes into the other car. It was mayhem. It was absolutely. Why is Ronda driving? She, she snuck and after she's they drunk. after they oh, yeah, yeah. she's in the back. They, they they snuck around. She and she was able to, to drive. But then, did you say she was drunk? She's drunk. She uh, definitely <laughs> she was drunk. But dude, it was you. Even you would have been. I will say was, this. It was so entertaining. So I watched. I, I watched last week tonight. Whenever it's on, mm-hmm. it's my, my favorite show on TV. And John Oliver roasting Vince McMahon was was mm-hmm. amazing. But when every time they would play a clip from the from WWE when it comes, it's like whatever you're watching is not as, as good, good as, as this, this. Yeah. because it was very funny. Like how yeah. he how he presented it. He's was a fan. Very, he's he's a, fan. a fan. You could can, tell. Can you bring up a second? Bring up just bring up Ronda Rousey. <laughs> uh, just bring up Raw last night. You want to see the, the car? I do. I you do. Got, you, I'm yeah. telling you, you got to see the scene. It's incredible. It's like, yeah, just Are you guys gonna, not getting in trouble for playing things? YouTube's you been can, insane. You, you can recently. play. You can play the audio of it because um, we just won't zoom in on it. But it's it's it is. This is this is it. This is yeah, fl- this is all three of them. This is arrested. It was it was so good. I was I was on the edge of my seat. The rest of it. They should have ended the show with it. By the way, last night they didn't. Um, what did they end with? Some I don't know, Kurt Angle stuff. This is it. This is this is them. This is in the match. 
This is the actual match. So go, fast forward just a little bit. Who's the tall one? That's Charlotte, Charlotte. Flair. Okay, and then Becky Lynch is redhead. Yes. yes. So, the, so this is this is still the match. Keep going. I'll tell you when. No, go back, go back, go back. Arm bar. Keep going. Keep, keep going back, back, uh, back, 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 back. Keep going. I'll tell you when. Oh, right here. This is it. Oh no, that was it. That was it. Rewind, rewind it. I want to see that throw punch first. Boom. Hits her in the throat. Yeah, she's going after her. But like this is this is it's just chaos. She, she's and then you look at Becky Lynch waiting. And there's yeah. So they're all three of them just kind of <laughs> dude, they're all yeah. going it's they're going nuts on each other. And then Charlotte tries to you can't tackle Ronda yeah, Rousey. You can't tackle. No, and then so and here's here the fake the security. Cops. This is the, yeah. those are fake security. I like first. this. I like yeah, this. The fake okay. security comes in first. They yeah. beat the piss out of the fake security. Not this is, fake security, they're real. Well, or whatever. They, they beat the piss out of the security, yeah. and then they're just, yeah, yeah. Get, guys are getting, get Charlotte Flair. Oh, that Flair. guy flew off Charlotte the ring. Flair, boom, oh! boom, oh! that guy right in the oh! face. Oh! Yeah. In I'm the telling nuts. you, this, this main event Ronda is Rousey's just looking for somebody to punch. This is a frat yeah. brawl right yeah. here. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> and then this is. And I'm telling She's you, looking for somebody yeah. to punch. This, this yeah. main event is going to do so much box office. It's incredible. Now, here comes the cops. Now, watch, now this is where it starts to get. Here comes the zip ties. Yeah, this is where it starts to get crazy. So they take Ronda on the side there. I like that Ronda Rousey's in an actual wrestling singlet kind of. Yeah, that's what she does. Now she, oh. look, she re- reaches over, knocks one of the guys, knocks the guy over, and because of that, now this, that you can't knock cops over. Ronda. Yeah, no, you just can't, you can't do, do that. that. Yeah. So now that now they these cop cops Ronda. Are pissed. Yeah. So yeah. So, I like that they got these I, these cop outfits at the same right. place. I got my pilot costume for Halloween yes. this year. But Roxy, pretty, I, 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 there's I, nothing Roxy, in those pockets. Did I describe the situation pretty well though? So yeah, far? yeah. So far, well, so good. Uh, now watch. It. Okay. Yeah. Becky, Becky says stomping on. But I do think I was picturing more high kicks than kicks yeah. to the you'll ground. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. No, wait. No. Now, now that now they're now they've cuffed Becky. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah. I really like Charlotte Flair. Uh, you said that last time you saw her too. Oh, look. Oh. 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 Now Charlotte Flair comes yeah. in. Nails. Charlotte's great, but Becky's yes. my girl. Holy yeah, crap! I Becky. love her. But okay, now, so oh, now look, oh, that Charlotte just Flair is just now Charlotte will, Flair gets arrested. Front row dude is psyched about it too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, yeah. She need the guy in the balls. Yeah. Like, boom! Oh. Kicks Becky in the face. I forgot about that. In the face. Yeah. So now go now. Let's fast forward. A little bit. Now we'll get to the back, and the you got to show. Yeah, here you go. This has got to be it, right? Now, now, yeah. Now we get to the back. Now here they're in the car together, and, <laughs> yeah, and they're kicking. And watch, watch this kick by Rhonda. Watch this kick. Watch. Watch this. And the big boot. Boom. Oh. Kicks, kicks yes. it. And look at that car. Just wrecked the car. You, you got to see the, the yeah. shot. The shot Rhonda takes from Charlotte, though, when she's her head sticking out to the side, is the crazy one. Like it, the it, knee one? She takes a knee to the face. She takes it that so that answers your question of how she got into the car. Is this the best camera work of all time? It's really good. Look, oh, look she gets out. Oh, oh. Now look, now they're kicking each other. Now now watch now what now watch what Rhonda Rhonda now they left alone because no one's no one's guarding Rhonda now. Yeah. Now, look, there's Rhonda. She's in the car, <laughs> she's hit the police car. See, I told you, Roxy. Yeah. She was drunk. Yeah, and that's no now watch now watch this. Now you see she takes a shot from Charlotte Flair that her head bounces off the side of the car. It is really incredible. Now, this is the type of stuff John Oliver was talking about, to where, like, this is the entertaining stuff. They stick Rhonda back in. Rhonda is selling this, too, oh, by the way. Oh, she's good. This is good. It's, isn't this fun? She's yeah. just good. She oh, gets watch, better. Watch. Here better. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Sticks her head out. Uh-oh. Wait, 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 wait. Where's Becky Lynch? In the car. Oh, she's in the car. Here we go. Oh, Charlotte Flair. Yeah. Boom! Oh! <laughs> Knocked her out. Shit! <laughs> Isn't that great? Anyway, I I was I was some of the best stuff I've seen on WWE. I quite forever. enjoyed that. It's just right? it, I will yeah. say this. such good build up. Right. They hate Macoos, each other. I enjoyed the show. It was yeah. good. It was yeah. good. That's what I'm telling you. It was really good. It's good. My point of it is, and this is the conversation that we had a long time ago. Yeah. It's if they get you invested, you will have reactions like that. Sure. Yeah. And it's like it just depends. There's some of the people that you see, and you're like, I don't care about these people. Right. I, like there's so much stuff that I fast forwarded through last yeah. night that I and and that should have ended the show. It did not. Totally. It should have like everybody went on a, been on a high. They, they, I love the fact that she wrecked that car too. That she just got behind the wheel it was and drove such, the car. It was such uh, old school WWE stuff. Yeah. I've tweeted out about it. I loved it. If you haven't had a chance, even if you're not a wrestling fan, like like I just if I just proved to you if Makuga. Is like McCook I was said, entertained by that. Super entertained yep. by that. You yep. guys should go and check that out because it's amazing. Yep. I think that and that that could be one of the best main events in WrestleMania history. I really do think so. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I I just think that all three of them are doing powerhouse moves to sell this. I and, agree. And yeah. it's so. I know that you didn't want Christian all three of them I at didn't. first, but in uh, WWE we trust and. 
they're doing a pretty good job with it. I don't WWE to be in trust all the time, but what no, I what, yeah, I know in the creative. But what I will say is this: they have sold they have sold me on the triple threat. Yeah. I still think they could have done Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey and just been as effective. But this this is working, and the fact that now it's for two championships is is very interesting. So can can they get a financial advisor to take some of that nine hundred and thirty million dollars in revenue from last year and, and pour it towards health care and and retirement yeah, for is, these this people? Kind of what we, we talked, talked about it yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's insane. It's insane. Um, and, dis- right, let's, and disgusting. Let's, yes. mo- let's move on uh, because that was something I just definitely had to had to cover because it, it, it's an incredible. It was an incredible. Segment. How did you know that you wanted to watch that? Did Ryan tip you off and say like, Last night? Trust, "Trust me, this no, is no, going to no, be no, one"? Because no. I know you don't always. I always fast forward through I, this this storyline. I've been fo- I've been oh, watching okay. everything because it's the one that I'm actually interested in, and it's the stuff that I think they've been writing. The, I've said it a million times in the show is that the women's wrestling uh, yeah. is the best part of WWE right now. Did, did you check out anything else? Last night. Yeah, good. yeah. I watched some of this. I mean, I watched some of the Dave Batista stuff, and I watched. How some, was that? It was fine. It was Yo, fine. Batista not dressed as Drax. He's pretty friggin' he's jacked. jacked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's a lot smaller, smaller than he used to be. Oh, which is crazy. Was Damn. that the first time you saw him? Uh, on last week tonight is the first time I saw him as not as Drax. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, but let's look. We got a lot of things we got to talk about before we Eminem. get the boys in here in 15 minutes. Let's start with the Joker poster. Yeah. Because <laughs> that poster came out today. Um, teaser yeah, tomorrow. baby. Teaser yeah. tomorrow. Show yes. it to me. Oh, yeah, the teaser tomorrow. Baby. Yeah, we're this getting poster, the teaser this tomorrow. poster is fantastic. Put on a happy face, it's mother such a good, F's. It's Isn't such it nice a great to get poster. an actual poster that's like kind of art and like kind of sells the movie yeah. without a bunch of photoshopped heads? This yeah. looks like the poster to an FX series. Yes. It, it does. Yeah, and, and a good I think series. in a good way, though. Yeah, in a good way. You no, know, totally. In it's interesting because we talked about, I think it was the other day on this show, that posters don't usually get you guys that excited. Right. Uh, I, I wasn't in that camp necessarily, but this one seems to have you. Yeah, because it's exactly what Riley just said. It's not the same standard poster yeah. of just faces and just face. This is like, you <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's the yeah. face part. Totally. So or or like him sit, standing there like no. once upon a time in Hollywood. Those no. were just this kind of... This yeah. looks like a circus. Like, it looks like a circus poster, the Joker, but it looks like he's... But the fact, the everything about it. How do you feel about put on a happy it's face? Awesome. I love that little tag. I love it because it's it's the it's, it's essential what the Joker is. It's he like, put on a happy face. Figuratively and, he and became the yeah. most iconic Batman villain. And I so I cannot wait for this for this teaser. I this is one of my most anticipated movies for sure. Mm. And the fact that it, it comes out, I mean October fourth. I love that release date. I love that release date for this. It's not a summer movie. It's no. not it's not a December movie. I saw October fourth and that immediately got me. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like a Halloween movie. It's a Halloween yeah. movie. Yeah. And it's gonna be a little it's gonna be a little creepy. It's gonna be How many parents buy their costumes in September and then their kids? Like see the this. promo for Joker and like I want to be him. I know. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, is it, is, I wouldn't is, let my kid do that. Is this rated R? They be. they didn't announce it, know. but yes, I believe. You think so? I really do think so. They have not announced that though. I would love a rated R. There's Joker a lot film. of rumors. I don't need one, but I would. I'm love pretty it. sure on that. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah I, because you can do P, like PG-13 certainly worked for The Dark Knight, um, and it could absolutely. Oh, look at this. So it says nudity may lead to a R rating. Nudity. Maybe may targeting. That's what I've been hearing. Okay. Maybe. All right. Well, that'd be interesting to see. I, I I love the poster. I'm curious what a lot of people out there think. I mean, I I can't imagine people not liking it. Have you guys been listening to all the stories about on set? No, and I was just going to say no. You haven't been hearing good, anything. Good, bad. No, just interesting. They uh, there were. There were ones about these train scenes. You guys didn't hear mm, about I this. I've heard nothing, where, John. Smith. So there's some kind. Of, there's footage of it too. If you guys want to pull it up, of them being on a train, um, and apparently all of the extras were like livid, and Why? because they were put on this train for like. 16 hours Ugh. in the excruciating heat and like Ugh. they didn't get to pe- like people were <laughs> rumors are people were pissing themselves like oh, all of this stuff this in New York? they were uh, yeah this? and they were upset that they were saying like some people thought that he was doing it on purpose to try to get the shot yeah. and try to like Piss get these aggravated yeah. and some people were saying that these extras were going to come to SAG or yeah, whoever yeah, yeah. and be like, this is, we won't do no, this. I've heard it. But there was interesting things about it. There's just been some stuff. Yeah. Not, I'm not saying in a bad way even, although I wouldn't want to be an extra during that, but there's been talk about the behind the scenes mm. of how they're actually accomplishing the Joker. Sounds like the the extras in the Battle for Winterfell, that article on Clatter.com. Oh, yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. They, I mean, they were 11 freezing. straight weeks of night shoots. Oh, for, the, for, the, for this, for this, this uh, yeah, episode yes. Battle yeah. for Winter. To Battle. try to get them in that yes. scared, yeah. exhausted yeah. mindset. Like Trench part. warfare. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Absolutely. And, uh, did you guys see the 
it was really cool looking footage though that we actually got that I don't know if they're allowed to pull it up but uh, it was no, really no. we showed it on movie talk and then we got blocked okay. oh, well, go. uh, good work, good if work. you picture a train and then people on it <laughs> and then and then him yeah. walking, and then you got it. In your head. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So. All right. Well, uh, the, the poster's out. Very curious to hear what you guys think about it. Um, the teaser comes out tomorrow, so we'll, we'll talk about the teaser for sure. We might even have to headline the, sh the show with that tomorrow because yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. Drops I'm pumped. Um, all right. The other thing is, I didn't see it, but you did. There's an yep. adventure stuff. Yeah. What's the new Avengers story? trailer? Tra what? Is it a trailer? It trailer. Was, this was so confusing. To it me was a, it's a minute long trailer okay. to, to sell that the tickets just went on sale. The oh. number one trending thing was that the tickets went on sale, yep. and if you go to Twitter. That's all that's being talked about. So somebody messaged me saying, "Did you see the new trailer?" It's, I couldn't even find it. It's mm. all new footage. It's all well, new. Where did it drop? Right. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, I would say for people that are that are really excited for this movie, just don't, skip. Don't it. need. It's a spoiler. Heavy? There's there's something that happened that I, I they they wrote me in for the reaction, and I went, "That's awesome." Wish I saw it in the movie. Okay, good. You know so, what I mean. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at yeah, it. Yeah, because I just, think, I don't know. I like knew, I'm in. There's, there's I'm something in that happens in it where it's like you knew it was gonna happen. Yeah, it's inevitable. It's character work. Right. It's character. Does that have to do the Ant Man? No, and uh, and it, it was just, it was so <laughs> great. I wanted it in the movie. Movie. Okay, I'm gonna wait. That's you, good you to got, know. And you guys know today, starting to today Hulk? for the next like 12 days, I think the What's collider that? is. Uh, we have like 15 or 18 questions that we're yeah. asking about Endgame, and we interviewed everybody around oh, the office. Ah, balls! You didn't answer that. No. Nope. You got that email. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. You were on it. I was. Yeah. yeah. And they asked like, "Who's gonna die? Who do you want I don't to think die?" I was on it. And so the first nah, uh, video, the first video dropped today. How do you guys know I was on it? Because it, 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 see it wasn't a BCC. I was on it? Yeah. I think so. I want to have to see if that's true. <laughs> I think you're lying to me. <laughs> but the first one dropped I today and it was very funny. Yeah, it was really cool. I saw yeah. it. I was like, I'm in. Because there's like then, our, our serious people in the office that know their things and then there's idiots like me that right. are like, you know. You know nothing. Yeah. Johnson. So Batman's right. dead. Oh. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> well the universe. I think Superman sometimes is dead. Yeah. Well, yeah. listen. Before we uh, get the get out of here for the break and welcome our guests to talk mm. some Cobra Kai and some other things. Um, anything else that we should talk about here? Uh, we do have a, a little news that might help for uh, tomorrow. What do you got? Jai Ooh. Courtney. Yes. Has, Ooh, coming uh, in. He's confirmed. Coming in. He's coming in tomorrow. So. Frickin' Wait, excited. Jai Courtney's going to uh, Jai Courtney, so, Courtney is on the show tomorrow. I got this And yeah. just confirmed that he is returning for Suicide the Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. Unreal. Like, if you guys, yeah, nice if I had found out you were doing that. this on Thursday or Friday, You'd this would have, oh! <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. So Roxy, you can't complain this anymore. This is why oh. I, I really worked it this time to, for, for you. you. Yeah. I'm Absolutely No, and that, that's actually true, because I know DC Movie News, we want you right. here. Oh Let's my God! It. This is yeah. so exciting. Has to he me. seen your review uh, of Live Free Die Hard? <laughs> I don't hope so, um, I, but but I do say that he's really good in uh, Suicide Squad. He's great. So Suicide confusing Squad. He might be though. My favorite character in that. So many questions for this guy. How are we doing a? People are saying it's a soft reboot, but then we have him That's and we have I mean. Margot and Robbie, I'm, I'm, and I have so many, we have questions. so many questions. Do we have Amanda Waller? Can he confirm that for us? Probably not, but Probably I'm gonna ask not. him anyway. And then also, like these new character situation, what does he want to see? There was those fake rumors about the Joker. So you're excited? Into, oh my God! <laughs> there's so many questions. <laughs> Listen, we have a lot of questions. I love him, and you'll be able to ask them tomorrow. But that's not who our guest is today. Uh, after, oh, I'm excited for this one too. <laughs> after the break, we are going to be talking to the creators of Cobra Kai. That's right, Cobra. Kai and season two is coming out and we get to ch talk to Josh Heald, John Hurwitz, Hayden Schlossberg. They're going to be in studio and you guys should submit your questions. Go to the Facebook group right now. Submit questions. I'd like to see a separate post just for the Cobra Kai guys. Hashtag Cloud Alive and Cobra Kai season two. Riley will have some of those questions hopefully from the booth maybe, Riley, that we can ask. Sure. And after the break, we will have the creators of Cobra Kai. Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening. We've got some great programming on there already. For those of you that have already watched, thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pike. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show with that I host with Jack Hind. That's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me, and Jay Williams. All those things are happening here at Collider. And, look, we 
We want to hear from you. So we want you to listen. We want you to watch. If you're a sports fan, even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about or maybe so deep into it that you wanted to learn even more about it. We've got you covered. You can do that. Follow us on iTunes and on YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the shows that you want and then leave us comments and rate uh, the shows as well and review them. And then let us know what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now. That's as far out as we'll go, uh, or cricket. But uh, maybe in the future, if we go Collider Worldwide, that's certainly a possibility. But for right now, Collider Sports is there for you. Take a look at it, take a watch, and let us know what you think. Oh, hi, guys. It's Perry here, and I am going to tell you about The Witching Hour. It is the show that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider Factory feed, and we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Ugh. Hello, Collider Live. My name is Amy Dallin. And I'm Corey Jondro, and we host a little show we love called Collider Heroes. And it is all of the things we love about movies, TV, comics themselves, all the breaking news, trailers, photos, but not paparazzi photos. <laughs> all of the superhero stuff we love, all of the indie comic stuff we love, all the stuff you had no idea was based on comics. 80 years of comic lore have led to this show and many years in film and TV, and we're living in a golden age of comics, and we want to share all of that zeal with you folks. So we talk about the stuff that's coming out. We talk about what we hope is coming out. We do fantasy casting of things that should exist. Why don't they exist? And we do your Twitter questions asking directly to us what we think of certain things. And every single week, since we both actually love and read physical comics by in print, we have a comic pull list where our five biggest favorite books of the week come out. And we dive into those with you guys. You can buy digital. I'll forgive you. As long as you're paying for your comics. It's all good. But if you buy in print, you can bag them and board them, and then they're worth more later, because comics are like certain things from the 90s that are totally worth the value. Buy comics, <laughs> buy in print. Digital's never worth anything later. Buy in print, keep comic stores alive. Or we can debate collector's items all day long. We can debate casting, we can debate movie, movie news. We can have all of our friends come join us, as we frequently do. We can ask professionals about their work. We've had some amazing guests come by the show. Yep. We try and to have catch it every Wednesday. That are on these properties that also love comics. You hear what it's like from their perspective, from inside, from outside. And this is all with the focus of bringing all this news to you guys. And we're here every Wednesday on Collider. And we love this stuff. We want to share it with you guys. We'll see you then. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. That's right, they gave Riley his own podcast. The Riley Roundtable is on its new home. It drops every Thursday. The Riley Roundtable is a little bit about everything. It's about movies and life, life and movies and everything in between. I like to have on special guests for discussions like Justice League versus Batman v Superman, for discussions about wine tasting, for discussions about UFOs, and everything in between. That's right, the Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the One on One with Christian Harloff podcast feed and later on Collider Video's own podcast video network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. Hey, everyone. John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day and what is burning up social media what topics are burning up social media that's what we do on collider sports time i'm joined by my top 10 co-host matt nost me and him we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about nfl the major league baseball playoffs nhl and the nba which is starting up soon we're going to talk about that we also get into ufc stuff college football all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports, we're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports Podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Collider Live. And uh, look, you saw us geek out on Friday when we had Martin <laughs> Cove in, and I'm about to geek out again because if you were familiar with my one-on-one -on -one show that I was doing for a little bit, one of my first interviews that I had was with the creators of Cobra Kai. They are back here again. It's Josh Heald, John Hurwitz, Hayden Schlossberg. Guys, thank you for joining us once again to talk about Cobra Kai. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's Good fun. to be here. I can't wait to, to talk about it again because this is one of those things where we last time we spoke, we talked for like over an hour. We could have we could have talked for three hours. I mean, let's not. Every time I saw you, it's like I, I said I felt bad because we, we would run into each other at like the supermarket and stuff, and I'd be like, oh, what are you getting at? So what's going to happen to season two? <laughs> <laughs> I saw my, both my kids run away with a card at one point. Like, I think you might have to. <laughs> <laughs> it was the, it was the, yeah, it was the truth. But um, season two is it's coming up. It's it's approaching, and let's talk about it, man. How was because well, first of all, let's go with the success of season one. Sure. Because we knew last time we spoke that the buzz was starting to happen. But I mean, then you start hearing Howard Stern's talking about it. Everybody's talking about this show. Surreal. It's it's mind blowing. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that you know we uh, we are obviously huge Karate Kid fans, as you know. Yeah. Uh, so all we tried to do was tell the story that we would want to tell and that we would want to watch. Uh, and uh, we were lucky that uh, it seems that others uh, enjoyed the kind of vision that we had for this. And it was it was it's it, like you said, like Howard Stern, one of our I mean, one of our heroes. Yeah. So like the fact that like it's become a bit or something that was talked about on that show was crazy to us. And just, you know, j seeing every day like a different random person popping up that loved it and then just the sheer numbers it was crazy yeah because we, and you know just we went through this in the beginning when we talked about it last time on the show was that there was that stigma at first like why are they doing this well, right that's gone now though <laughs> that's gone for them i mean from yep. let 90 percent of it is gone yeah i mean it was the the fun of season one was that we knew we were going to do this thing that was very earnest and very true to the tone of the uh the movies and carry it forward in a way that felt like it was being honest to what the fans' expectations of a Karate Kid continuation would be right. while having a lot of new stuff that hopefully got ahead of the audience and they didn't see coming. But, you know, you also have three guys who write Hot Tub Time Machine and Harold and Kumar movies, and uh, the fear is that we're going to come in and just mess it all up and right. ruin it. Uh, now it's it's a different uh, situation. They you know our our magic trick is out there. We've uh, shown to be uh, dramatically um, honest in terms of what we're doing, and we hope that we can get ahead of the audience again a little bit. Well, that's the thing, Hayden, because like so we when we did talk to Martin Cove, one of the things that I noticed from interviewing you guys was the trust that you guys have now from everybody. Like, and that was what Martin said. He said the reason why I was was on because of these guys. Like they they sold it to me. And and they just believe in it. They know it. Like that's got to be so much more comforting. And two, you don't have to worry about selling anybody. They just trust you, and you can just go and do season two. Yeah, I think that was the big difference in making season two. Um, season one, as much as you know, we got along with Ralph and Billy, and you know, we saw eye eye to eye, and with everything, they were taking a leap of faith. At the end of the day, they didn't know exactly what the tone would be. Right. Um, other than just reading the script. And so this year, they kind of knew the tone. They trusted us with certain things when it, you know, when it came to comedy, when it came to something serious. Um, so it just made it that, that much better. Does that mean that there's more pressure on you guys going into this one because everybody's seen and believes this to be a huge hit? Or does that mean there's less pressure because you already have the fans' approval? I don't know. We don't really look at it that way. You know, I think, I mean, technically there would be more pressure, but, you know, I think we're just doing our thing. We're just, you know, we, we're telling the story that we've wanted to tell from the beginning. Uh, it's been, you know, great that people are reacting the way they are. So we're just going to keep you know, doing the same form of storytelling that we did last season and continuing the story. And uh, like Josh said, you know, try to get ahead of the audience, try not to make it, you know, super predictable and uh, try to, you know, uh, get the same feels from the audience, get the same laughs from the audience and have them first and foremost, emotionally invested and connected to the characters. Yeah, the pressure is really from ourselves. You know, when we sit down at the beginning of the season and we have a lot of things that are, you know, a little bit fuzzy in terms of where exactly we're going with a certain beat. And the pressure is just the three of us continuing that discussion with the writers, without the writers, uh, with each other on set, you know, at, during post-production. I mean, we are, we never stop thinking about this show. Right. So we never feel it from like, oh my gosh, we have to now really, we've been, we've inherited all this other pressure. We came in to season one with our own baggage of pressure and we just kind of keep it on our backs. Yeah, and I remember you guys telling me that when you were coming up with season one that you knew... It, 
this thing's going to hit. If, it will, if this thing hits the way we want it to, then we have this planned out. We have this planned out. You've been planning out the arc for a long time. Sure. That's refreshing. But the other thing, so take me through this, though, as far as we, you guys were actually here the day we found out that season two was, yeah. was getting renewed. Sure. And so take me through the, the because not, not the pressure that Roxy's talking about, but more like, okay, because there is a little bit of pressure as far as getting it out there quicker, right? So it's like, what's that process like? So we're let's sit down, because you guys are also buddies. You've been friends for a long time. That's got to make it easier. But what's that? What's that like? Like, how do you know? Okay, here's the arc. Let's start working on it now, so we can get it in time. We had uh, a lot of the season two storyline uh, prepared from the very beginning of this uh, show. When we pitched the show, we pitched the entire first season, and we knew what the first season was setting up in terms of where we're going on April twenty fourth, and we knew pretty much about where we were ending as well. Uh, so it was. Not as, okay, we know exactly what we're doing, we can start writing a script right away, but we had a lot of it figured out because of the the, the thinking that went into the, the show as a multi-season arc from the beginning. But like you said, it was a very you know excited, aggressive, uh, renewal in yeah. terms of okay, you know, you're renewed. Get to work. But, <laughs> open a writer's room as soon as possible. Get into production as soon as possible. Have a post production finished as soon as possible. And it's all from a perspective of uh, of excitement and wanting to have more Cobra Kai. And our job is to make sure that that doesn't move too fast or you know or too you know where you're starting to get sloppy with certain things. I was just going to say that like it helps that we spend a lot of time together. You yeah. know, like you know. Uh, where we when we're making the show, uh, the three of us live together. You know, we're it's funny. We've all been friends for over 20 years. Yeah. You know, Josh and I lived together in college and uh, Hayden and I moved out to L.A. together and we lived together for five years. So now, like whenever we're making the show, like the three of us have a place together. And you know you we go the, shopping. Yeah, you, know? yeah you, 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 you might see us in the supermarket together. Uh, but, uh, you know, but like, you know, we're. Uh, we're thinking and talking about the show all the time. We drive to set together, where we eat every meal together while we're you making the show. Ever sick of each other? Uh, well, I mean, probably yeah, bits. Yeah. yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. But you know, more. I think there's more love and more yeah. enjoying around the each brothers. other. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, but because we spend so much time together, it's you know coming into think of you know uh, doing a season two or doing a season three or going forward. You know, we've had these conversations just nonstop for a while, so it doesn't feel as daunting. Right? Yeah. When you have those conversations, I, I heard that you guys planned a lot of season two. How much of that actually makes it to what we're going to see in season two? And how much of it did you have to throw out and say, all right, that was a nice conversation, but it's not it's, making the cut? That's a good question because, you know, you go in with these, you know, thoughts and then you actually start writing things and that leads you to different directions. Like we knew we had a lot of storyline storylines that we wanted to use in season one that didn't fit. So we were like, okay, well, we're going to put them in season two. And some we did, but others we still haven't been able to find the right like room for. So There's a ridiculous uh, comedic, potentially multi-season arc that, uh, that Hayden especially loves that has been in discussions since uh, day one of the writer's room season one and still is not in the show, right. but, uh, but could show up you know, at any point. It will. Um, but it totally will. It's yeah. going to end up there. <laughs> yeah. It'll be there. But yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of stuff like that, you know, and... The thing that's fun is like, you know, we'll come up with the the way our process works is like the three of us will come up with a ton of stuff on our own and we'll have like all these index cards on the wall and we'll bring in the writer's room and we'll kind of download everything with them. And like most of the stuff that starts on the wall stays on the wall and, and isn't in the season because there's just so many ideas and you're just trying to sort of weave through, OK, which of these different like, you know, training methods right. might fit within the story that we're telling the season, yeah. which – you know, uh, all, but you it's, know, it's, it's interesting for a writer. I mean, because every every show is different with our show. It's like, you know, the writers come in and they kind of like they hear what's going to be happening and where the, the main goalposts are. And then it becomes like, how do we get there? Yeah. Um, because it's super serialized. Also, there's not a lot of breaking story and saying, OK, let's move on to episode seven. What's that about? You know, there's it's more likely that going into the season, an idea we have that feels like, OK, this is uh, an episode might turn into okay, no, that takes place over three episodes, or actually, no, that's just a joke in one scene. Um, and it's more likely that that would happen than an entire thing would just leave. Uh, but occasionally, a discussion takes you in a place where you add to it, and by the time you're done, it looks quite different than where we started. 
So is it how many episodes this season? Ten again. Ten again. Okay. So and and we're and they're half an hour piece. piece close Approximately. To it? Yeah. They they trend uh, some some a little less than a half hour, some a little more, but right around the thirty minute mark. All right. So let's talk a little bit about what you can tell me about the story this season. For example, when is Elizabeth Shue coming back? <laughs> 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 this is this is the time we're going to tell you. <laughs> finally, this finally, finally, finally going to answer the question. Right. No. But as far as the, so, just give me a little because we've seen the trailer. The trailer so far brilliant. I love that scene with uh, with Johnny Sun and and Daniel as they're in the dojo and. Like he's telling him this, the the lessons, and the kid just doesn't get it. He's got he's, he's got he's got Johnny. He's got too much Johnny in him, but he doesn't he doesn't get it. But what kind of what kind of themes are we going to see? What what are we going to what are we going to what should we know about the story this season going in? Well, we know that look, the season one ended uh, with a dramatic return of John Kreese. so that is inherently going to bring a, a another fatherly sort of storyline to the season. You know, for better or worse, in terms of. Here's a guy we know who had a very dysfunctional father-son relationship with Johnny. Who choked him out in the park. Right. And, and without the choking, you know, who does that remind us of? Well, Johnny's, you know, dysfunctional relationship with his own son. Right. And, you know, and now you have this, you know, his son being mentored by the other guy. So it's a lot of that stuff. Nothing drops. You know, we are continuing uh, with everything you care about. We are, you know, continuing to tell that story. And it's not like, well, that didn't get resolved. And... This whole this whole idea of season one was always meant to set up season two, which we always describe as dojo versus dojo, yeah. a fight for the soul of the valley. And it's, you know, now that Daniel has been truly awakened in the real way in terms of knowing what his purpose is, well, what does that mean for a guy who doesn't live in Reseda and have nothing? Uh, he's a guy who lives, you know, on the on the mountaintop and has right. a family and a business and, and other responsibilities in his life. So... We're just we're throwing more things at this rivalry and at these two guys who are incredibly passionate and have let their philosophies and resentments bleed down to the next generation. And speaking of that next generation, there's a lot going on with those kids. Yeah, also. Right. There, there's a ton there. And, that, and that's some, one of the things we're really excited about is, you know, we've all fell in love with Daniel and Johnny and the characters of Karate Kid. And it's been awesome for us to see people really connect with the young audience on our show and I mean, we have an amazing group of actors. Each each and every one of these kids, they're fantastic. And not only are they great actors, they're good people. Yeah. And they also desperately want to, like, know as much karate as possible, oh, which, awesome. is, which is awesome. Yeah. So, we, you know, when you see fights that some of these kids are in, I mean, it's mostly them. Yeah, well, that was – that's – what we said last time too, I think that the reason that this show was such a massive hit was because it spoke to both generations for sure. It's, I mean, to the Karate Kid fanatics in here, absolutely. But now the new people who didn't know it, I was I'm really curious to how many people went back to watch Karate Kid for the first time after the show. I wonder how many. I'd love to see those numbers. I just mm -hmm. I, I just showed my seven year old. She finally watched Karate Kid. I think I had sent you a message. Yeah, yeah. Loved it. Like <laughs> loved it. And I told uh, Martin when he was on, "That's the bad man." Right. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. And new. But like it, it's. What it is doing is introducing this movie to new people, for sure, but going inside of all these um, these things that I love. But this is the question that I have for you guys, too, because you had mentioned this last time. What? How do you how do you make sure that you throw these isms in there that I love and the, the references, but you don't overdo it? Well, you just don't – that's not your focus. Your focus is the story. And then you, you know, naturally – are going to have moments where you think, okay, this character is thinking about their past. We have that footage, right? You right, know? right, right. What is the what is that moment that that captures that? So it's it's you know you're you're never going in with the attitude of like, okay, how can we utilize this footage? You go in with, okay, let's make this kind of you know, you know, fifty percent Better Call Saul, fifty percent like Dynasty, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. kind of story. And we happen to have like this backstory, this Old Testament yep. that you can, you know, call back on, which ultimately affects, you know, everybody's life, our past. You know, it's for the story is about these characters trying to get over at least Johnny get over the past. Um, and, you know, so we have to have that footage is awesome. It just has to be used in a way where you're just kind of like, oh, like you're emotionally connecting to it. It's, it's being used as a tool 
for storytelling. Not it's just for, part of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, totally. hel- it helps that there's three of us also because well, you know, every once in a while you'll film something and you're watching it in the editing room. And you're like, it's a little much. Okay, and then you pull it back. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I, I love how passionate you guys are, even in this conversation. And Christian always calls us your Star Wars. Like this is to yeah. you as Star Wars is to a lot of people. I think Star do, Wars is to them what Karate Kid okay, is to us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys ever have this conversation about a different franchise? Were you ever thinking about giving something else the Cobra? high treatment well I mean the, like the the truth is a lot of those movies like Back to the Future and Star Wars are all in the same like video box that we had back back in the day so you know it's like Back to the Future is one of those things where you could think of all different types of you know ways of going about it it's so tricky because on the one hand you're so connected to those ca- those actors and those characters uh, the way we are with Daniel and Johnny and Ralph and Billy um, on the other hand, you know, you have this great story that, you know, 20 years from now or 30 years from now, it's going to be weird to watch, you know, and see like, oh, wait, the past was the 50s, the 80s is the present, right. you know, so right. it's like it's begging for a remake, you know, at some point in the future. It's, it's, it's like destined to happen, but it's also like sacrilege. You I know. It's so, so funny you say that because when we first met. Uh, back in, I think it was like 2012, yep. there was this report going around that you guys ah. said, we're doing the Back to the Future. Oh, my no, God, yeah. yeah. And it never yeah, we, yeah, no, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. But the thing is, too, that was back then when I guarantee if that same report comes out today, people go, well, what's the Cobra guy guys that said? You know, you know what I mean? We, we have a little bit more yeah. cred now. But, more cred. You know, but at, at, at the same time, you know, it's one of those things that all the, all the complexities that Hayden mentioned yeah. exist with that. And you know, if that was ever going to happen at some point, like we will raise our hands, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. Yeah, I could see. I mean, cause we, we had a lengthy discussion about it on this show to where I, I think I was the only person in the room that I think you could do something very s- similar to what you guys did with the franchise. And you could, the DeLoreans found years later, and yeah. it's another kid. And maybe, maybe Marty pops in and does and does something. We has some kind of conversation. What You could do something. There is a story out there. And I think you guys I, have proven yeah, that. I, think, I, mean, I think, think it will yeah. happen. I think, I think, you know, just, you know, in the ether, like, it's there you have Spielberg and you have Zemeckis right. and the, these. And it's a similar story with Goonies. I mean, that's another one that's always talked about in terms right. of, you know, oh, someone should really. And there's just so many companies and personalities. And uh, b- besides all the baggage of like, oh, my God, like you're talking about, you know, opening the right. arc. Yeah, you guys uh, didn't just walk in and go, hey, we're going to do Cobra Cut. Yeah. You had to like go through <laughs> yeah, a lot I, of meetings to get that done. Yeah. And it, and it was interesting, you know, who owns the rights and what right. they're doing right now. And so like anything that has Spielberg involved, you know, is he's going to be interested in, in that and right. have a say and so I think one of the one of the reasons why Cobra Kai worked out was you know we were able to kind of just have this sort of creative control uh, as if it was like one of the franchises that we It was created. very right. dormant I mean it had they had made the Jaden Smith movie it did very very well um, but then it had nothing had really materialized after that in terms of a sequel that Sony was saying we have the script, it's awesome, we're going to go make it. Um, you know, we we kind of watched and sat back and expected something to happen. And when it didn't, it felt like, okay, this is a, a good time in terms of once we knew if we could, you know, get some, you know, permission to use the rights that Sony would probably be excited about this piece of IP. Yeah. It was timing. I mean, I think all of these, there's, there's tons of movies from our childhood that you'd say, oh my God, it would be a dream to, to start digging into it. But you also go like, you know, does it, is it begging for it? This one really felt like there was a story inherent with the Billy character that, you know, with Johnny, that felt like, okay, I, I know what that show is yeah. for us. The, the thing, too, with, like you, you mentioned, Goonies, Back to the Future, uh, Karate Kid, these are movies that, you say you introduced to your daughter, these are movies that still hold up. Oh, yeah. 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 There was a lot of movies that if you watch back, like, don't. Yeah. And I think that you by doing Cobra Kai, you proved the fact that, like, Maybe a full reboot of a movie isn't necessary, but doing a continuation with a series is something that is like ripe and prime right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, so I, I think it is possible, like for for any of those things that you talked about. Um, and you know, I, the interesting thing about like the 1980s, there was no like Disney didn't dominate like it did today. Right. So we had live action movies that like skewed a little older. 
you know, and so so we look back on that era and, you know, we have these movies like Back to the Future, which has a couple moments in it that uh, I don't know if like you'd get Pixar would have right. Biff and Lorraine in the back of the car and, and yeah. like all sorts of like moments like that. Um, Marty is there to sexually assault his his mother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. You know, I mean, and, and there's there's, you know, so so, you know, I think that there's like and I think you see it with Stranger Things and Cobra Kai is connected to that this desire to have this type of storytelling, which doesn't exist today because you can't get it in movies. Right. Like, it, you're not gonna like make a Goonies, like this action adventure for kids, unless it's like an established book that like, you know, you know. <laughs> you know well, it, streaming's <laughs> changed the game on that too, though, too, as you yeah, guys have proven, sure. because te- you, you know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago on network television, you guys can't do this type of this show the way that you do it. There's no way. Like you, the no. development inside of these characters help because of these streaming things. And part of that, because I remember the whole conversation about YouTube, because it wasn't really, there weren't any big shows on it. You guys were like the massive show. Do you guys just walk around like the kings over there? You have to. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the kings of that thing. We walk around like kings anyway, but um, <laughs> now it feels a little more earned. No, we, no we're very, very grateful. Yeah. You know, we, we keep our heads down and do our work. But uh, but yeah, everything you said we agree with. I mean, you see, you know, Stephen King, uh, you know, Castle Rock, you know, like, uh, taking a world of, you know, instead of saying, okay, we're going to go remake Shawshank Redemption, you know, take the best pieces of, of things and create a world. I mean, is there a show called Hill Valley that we should make and uh, and pitch and sell? Like, I don't know. You tell us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we like the, the streaming aspect of it just gives you the ability to go into it where it's not just, oh, I see what they're doing. It's the it's the underdog kid and the thing and the that. It's, it gives you so many points of view to play with where you can jump around and create a world that you care about um, in terms of the 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 tone and paying homage to the the original material and find new ways to go that isn't just, okay, we know that story, here it is again. The first time around, a lot of people used their free trial on YouTube Red to watch your guys' show. Did YouTube have a discussion with you at all about whether ramping up to this, people have been subscribing to YouTube Red, or do you guys have any kind of awareness of what those numbers have looked like? They haven't told us the exact numbers, but needless to say, there was a huge spike when Cobra Kai came out and continues to, you know, it's... It's helped immensely, and I think you know they they were eager for us to get you know season two out, and uh, you know uh, you know hopefully uh, we'll be you know doing seasons for years to come. We'll find out. So last season obviously ended with a with a tournament. Will every season end with a tournament? No, no, no. definitely no. not. Okay. Definitely not. okay, we just felt like if and and I'm not saying whether or not season two does end with one, yeah. uh, but it's uh, if you have a tournament at the end of every season, it's going to start feeling. Like villain of the week. Type yeah. Stuff. Okay. Yeah, what yeah. happens here? Does it? Does the building catch on fire? You know, what, are, what do you do to keep you know raising the stakes? I see. Okay. Um, do you yeah. guys have a dream amount of seasons? I know you said you've planned out to the end of the series. So. Well, I we I mean I think we know where we want the characters to be at the end, and then it's just like we happen to have planned out like a few seasons ahead. After last season, we started thinking, okay, well, how how would this work? You know, and so we have. You know, a few seasons in mind, so we feel confident. Like, okay, we could definitely. I don't want to throw a number out, but like, the truth is, Twelve. It's, it's, but it's like, you know, it, I was gonna say twenty six. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say like, e- e- even you know, what are the Simpsons? We, Whatever we, they're doing, we like. enjoy making the show, and so it's it's kind of like Rocky. It's like, okay, well, did they? Need Rocky two? Well, actually, yeah, because right. Rocky four was awesome. You right, know, like, right, right. and so I think that you just like, um, as long as we're inspired and like want to get those Karate Kid feels out there and montages and like you know the interesting like kind of bully angle. Like I think you know there's a lot of potential for the show to go on more than what we think. But I think, like, you know, we're, tr- you know, we have it, a lot of chunks yeah. of future storylines that we know we're telling. Yeah. And we know some of those things are, are an entire season in and of themselves. And it's, you know, it's funny as we write, sometimes, you know, you think you're going to get to a place and then you realize you're not even there yet. So, you know, in the beginning, it felt like, OK, it's X amount of seasons. But that number has grown in terms of where we are now at the end of season but two. We, we've always been these kinds of writers. You know, we, we, we're guys who made franchises in the feature world. Right. So we always would fall in love with our characters and want to continue telling stories with those characters. And the thing that happens in, in the writer's room on this or just making the show is, you know, we love all these characters. We have thoughts about all the characters. And 
Like even the most minor characters, we talk about them at length. Love Maybe it. more Wait. than the major characters. <laughs> Probably yeah. more than the major characters, but no, we talk about them at length, and we're always thinking about different ways, different places we could go. So it's hard to to know exactly how many seasons right. there well, will be. Speaking of that, because there are a couple of things. So one of the things that I asked Martin when he was on the show, and I think I asked you last time, was about Dutch. <laughs> and, and what he told me, what he told me on the air, was that the fact that you guys, you know, there was something that you guys definitely had in mind for him, and then he called him up. Yeah, called him up, but he just, just. Not interested in doing it at the moment. I, you know, we had a storyline that we were considering. It was in the baby stages of, you know, yeah. thinking about, and uh, none of us, just like we didn't know Ralph Macchio, we didn't know Chad McQueen, yeah, and uh, and Marty. It's great having, you know, Cobra Kai's around to make calls to other Cobra Kai's. Right. Uh, so Marty was helpful in uh, in calling Chad, and I, I I think it was a mix of of schedule yeah. and, and everything else, but uh, it it wasn't able to come to fruition. Um, so but there was there was, there was one period you know? of time where there there looked like. <laughs> There could have been a meeting in the desert. Yeah, um, he's. He, I think he lives in Palm Desert, and yeah. there was like there was we, a moment. We, we were all willing to like take a drive to Palm Desert to meet with Chad oh, McQueen, so which would have been like you know its own little mini documentary. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah you exactly. Know, you never but, know. I mean, the the hope is that we do the season, the show for a while, and uh, that you know you could have conversations with right. any of these characters. You know, we talk about. You know, we've had conversations with characters that are not in season two, or actors that are not in season two. That from the previous movies and stuff. Uh, from, oh yeah. From, yeah, yeah, from the movies, yeah, from uh, from season one, characters yeah. that don't show up in season two, because you know anyone in this universe can show up at any time. Yeah, it's gotta be engaged. Elizabeth Shue, right? What's that? It's gotta be Elizabeth Shue, right? <laughs> That's what we're hoping. Well, no, I, well, we've I, engaged I'm hoping a lot Tommy. Yeah. Tommy's gotta show yeah. up. Tommy's gotta show we, up. We've we'll talked see. with everybody from season one. We talked with a lot of the guys yeah. from the movie, and in a way of like, let's have an ongoing dialogue. That hey, if we were to ever do this or hey if your character you know goes away but comes back um, we, we want to continue to to have a family you know yeah. the three of us when we first moved to Los Angeles uh, and a little before even we watched the show Oz oh, and, yeah. and we loved yeah, yeah. that from day one you have this full prison you know on, on episode one you're following Dino Ortolani oh he's dead and yeah, right, uh, spoiler right. for the you know pilot um, uh, <laughs> it's on 20 years ago no big deal uh, the, uh, but then all of a sudden you're in season two and three and you're meeting characters that have been there the whole time but now they have the full arc yeah. and we think of this show the same way where you know it's it's we're building this world we think about our background actors you know constantly in terms of making sure that there's continuity in Smart, terms of who's yeah. in the dojo and who's in the school who's in the world you could feature that um, at any time they, yeah. they can Smart. pop up you I know that. and uh so that's that's yeah, how somebody we who's about been on the it, show yeah. for two years that you know has never had a line suddenly has a line i is, love that is there like a uh because it's such a beloved franchise right and we talk about it all, all the, time, the time all the time oh they know <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'm sure you guys get the fandom Us here too. right um is there or like do you do you meet friends or something maybe like a dinner party and like so have you guys thought about uh, doing this? this thing? Like, are you pitch things? You know, like when my, you're a comedian, your dad's like, yeah. you know, they don't fill your soda. You my, do a my, that. my dad is is the main one for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's plenty of people, but it's fun because my dad, you know, I give him a sneak peek at sure. season two, and he's already asking me questions about different characters. When are you gonna mention things. soda? <laughs> <laughs> my dad's a big fan of of the pawn shop guy oh, from season one, yeah, so yeah, he was yeah. just like, is he coming back? Like that, like those. It's, it's, it's funny because, yeah, like my mom will go online and read comments and she'll be like, are you bringing Chosen back? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. do you know yeah. who Chosen is? <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> is Terry Silver coming in this season? You know, so like there's a lot of um, like hardcore Karate Kid fans that, you know, will say like, OK, well, you have to bring Barnes back. I mean, you just have to. Yeah, it's fun. There's I mean, no like, way you're not. And and then so it's like <laughs> you're fun being like, listen, I don't know, maybe, you know. like For us, it's like fun really going online and seeing some of the, you know, the uh, fake spoilers or right. the, you know, people who think they Barnes know what's Barnes goes happening. back and fights Joseph. You know, well, I, saw, you know, I saw the one cup was turned like this. That must mean that this is. And it's like, no, that was just that how they put down the cup. but uh, <laughs> Or is it? Uh, but we love, you know, that there's such a that just means that you're connected. I mean, like when you're when you're thinking that deep deeply about yeah. what every move means. I mean, we thought about that with the Sopranos back in the day with like, oh, the Pine Barons, like that guy must What's be coming mean, back. Right. Well, what was that with the question though too? Because the fan, obviously the fans will come up with their theories and who they hope to see. But have you gotten emails and calls from some people that were in the franchise? Like, sure. Like, like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's, Definitely. That's kind of the, one of the things. Have you guys, because you don't say whether or not she's in it or not, but have you met or talked with Hillary Swank? Uh, no comment. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the truth is we have, but but the comment we can say is we have talked to people from the original movies that have not been on the show yet. Yeah, you know, like and so you know, I, and that's ongoing. And some sometimes it's like, 
you know, it's a Twitter engagement, and other times it's just like, okay, it's like a, you know, we, we end up meeting up. You and know? you hear things, you know, through representatives or through friends of friends, or like, you know, hey, you know, they they are aware of the show and love you guys. And, and for us, you know, sometimes you, you know, you, we will talk or not talk to somebody and or just know from the start that, hey, this is casual, this is an ongoing conversation, um, because we don't want to just let our own nostalgia drive a storyline or right. like, oh my gosh, we had such an amazing, you know, lunch or drinks or, you know, a conversation. Now we have to find a way because it'd be awkward not to. Um, we want to make sure that we keep telling the story that we set out to tell uh, because we know in the story and the, in the grand big story, you know, when it's all said and done that we will have made room for everybody. Has anybody straight up said no to you guys? You called, you <laughs> wanted them on the show and they said, nah. Not, not in the, not, no. not exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, there, you have conversations, and sometimes it takes convincing, and sometimes you know the conversations are ongoing. I think I asked uh, Bill Murray to play uh, Tom Cole in season one. Um, <laughs> How did, you, did you? Get, I didn't actually did get, get to yeah. Bill Murray, but I did the. I was like the voice right, message. I'm make, I think that you know casting was like, yeah, let's take some big shots, and I was like, oh, here it goes. Here goes absolutely, literally nothing. And you know, I made the the Bill Murray uh, answering machine phone call that people have made, and right. didn't hear anything back. So technically. Bill Murray passed. He didn't Tom say no. Cole. He did not say no. <laughs> he may have not gotten that. that he did not say no. What, what is the uh, craziest thing that you guys have pitched so far that did not make it onto the show? Something that one of you guys just threw out there and everybody was like, nah, can't do that. I'm trying to think because there's things that have been pitched that we have said absolutely not yet. Um, yeah. But I don't know if there's things that we have said like absolutely not get out of here and don't come back for the rest of the day. Daniel um, can use the force. <laughs> because we just know like even the most ridiculous, you know, silly joke that has nothing to do with anything. There might be a character or a place with that because there's so many. Uh, you know, an interesting thing show. is we have a lot of footage from the original movies that you haven't seen. Um, so like there's scenes that were deleted that were never in like a deleted scene section of the DVD. So I like it's like we have these memories that the audience wasn't in on. Right. Um and, and you know why they were cut from the film. You can see, you know, narratively like, oh that that makes no sense. I'm do surprised. those play as canon inside your head so as writers though? Well that's the interesting thing. Like I, that was one of those things like this season we saw and there wasn't like enough time like it like it came in in the middle of the season. Yeah, we put a request yeah. out at the beginning of the season for uh as many dailies as we can get for Certain parts of all the Karate Kids that we want might that we might want to reference uh, in the show because it takes a lot of time for them to go actually out to the salt mine where they're buried and clean off the negative and digitally <laughs> upload it. Right. And by the time we get it, we're in post production, and some of that stuff we might not want anymore. And some of the stuff comes and they're like, "Oh, we accidentally also got this," and you never know what this is when you brush it off and look at it. But it's interesting. You, I mean, that's the question: Is it canon? Like, yeah. like it could. Like, I feel like in real life, people like have these like memories. Like, did that happen right. or not? Yeah, you know. And so, like, well, it, his, it, his whole, I, week, his know, whole weekend was like. I, I, <laughs> I, I view it as there's everything that I've seen thus far. I view as canon in yeah. a weird way. Like, it, there hasn't been anything that's super inconsistent with the story that we know. Right. So, in my mind, it's canon, but. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. that, that was something like, like it was like, oh, wow, this is like a nice little treasure trove. And like right. we want to take advantage of this. And it's just like, ah, we can't do it right now. It just didn't. It was too late in the in the game to get that info. Can you tell us what any of those things are that we haven't seen? It's it's more like Johnny Daniel interaction in the school. Like there was more than just what we saw. Like there's more without like spoiling the scenes, it's just like more encounters that they and had. There's, I mean, there's a richer story. I think the you know the original Karate Kid script is out there somewhere, but we have like the actual line script that they used to film. So there were scenes shot, you know, with Daniel and his mom that aren't in the film. That obviously you can tell watching that movie 900 times, like yeah. we have, that that whole her whole storyline was was morphed and shaped, and there must have been more there in terms of her job and what happened. Um, so, but there was lots of that stuff that you understand why the movie didn't need that, yeah. but. It does raise that question to us. If we find a nugget that we that looks so juicy for something that we might want to use, it can become canon because there are holes anyway that we are you know that we are inventing in terms of backstories for characters that were not touched on. Um, but we're just trying not to challenge those. Is Louis coming back? 
can't uh, say. We're not. We're not. Maybe we, we, we can't say. Either, <laughs> can't right. can't say, say either way. Can't we, say either way. What we can say is that we love Brett Ernst, yeah. and he's amazing. He's and you know, he's somebody who we view as a character that we love in this. Universe. Yeah, we can't say who's coming back and not coming back besides the series regulars that people okay. know are coming back. But anybody who does either come back or does not come back once you see this season does not mean that they, they can't won't be back. Come yes. back. Yeah. Has there been a point when you guys were shooting where, I mean, first of all, I usually give TV a three-episode test. If it doesn't have me by the third episode, I'm out. This one had me like 15 minutes in, right? Because awesome. when you guys take that chance with Billy's, when when Johnny, I mean, that's a, that's a big chance, and it was awesome. Yeah. Was, there any, was there any points when you're fight, doing some of the fight scenes or some of the karate stuff that, you, you like cut and you say, man, it would be great to have Pat Morita here. It would be great to have I Mr. Mean, Miyagi. It would, yeah. it would be amazing to have Pat Morita. Just, Mr. Miyagi is a huge character on our show despite him not really being there. He occasionally shows up in flashback. But he's his spirit permeates the entire Miyagi-Do karate storyline, everything going on with Daniel. He's there. So, you know, it's – it would have been amazing to have been able to make the show with Pat here. Um, Pat's absence has, you know, led to uh, us thinking outside the box, and we think creatively. Uh, it's, it's, you know, there's, there's still a lot to do with him without him being there in the flesh. The, the disappointing thing is that, you know, right after we, uh, around the time we pitched this show, um, John Avildsen passed away, mm -hmm. and we never got a chance to sit down with him and, you know, at least tell him, you know, what this could have, you know, would be. Um, we never got a chance to meet Jerry Weintraub. You know, Pat is, is no longer with us. Uh, but this process has been able to have us establish a relationship with Robert Mark Kamen, who wrote uh, the original movies. And uh, and we've established a friendship and a uh, and a mutual respect for each other that we already had for him. And uh, and we're hoping he, you know, is starting to have for us. But uh, that he's, you know, one of those other links, you know, besides Ralph, Billy, Marty, you know, right. these guys well, from yeah, the movies. So Bill Conti's not around, right? right. So Conti, Conti is around. We have oh, not. Yeah. Uh, we have no, not. But, he's, uh, but he, as far as is he working with you? Well, he's yeah. not working with us. We're able to use his music as part of the the arrangement they have. But we, you know, he's somebody that is on our radars in terms of we would like to sit down because, uh, you know, musically, um, I mean, I grew up with you know, playing a lot of instruments and, you know, that music meant a lot to right. me but it means a lot to all of us between you know all the movies that he's scored but you haven't so conversations so as far as him doing something uh well we have we have zach uh, zach and leah who do our uh, composing yeah. um they do a tremendous job for the show but we're also able to use conti music um in, in certain chunks yeah, yeah. um and the combination of that is amazing because sometimes they're able to uh, reorchestrate a section of Conti or use a conti theme to blend into um into a new song um but they've um, last season, we only orchestrated the tenth episode in terms of a full orchestra. The mm -hmm. rest of it was all synthesized. This season, all ten episodes, uh, full orchestra, oh, wow. just like that tenth episode. With you know, you watch this if you have a good Dolby, you know, surround sound system, you will hear the the strings and the French horns, and it's a legit. Uh, will legit we thing. hear? Will we hear best around in season two? <laughs> we're not going to tell you which songs. What I will say is <laughs> there. We're going to have a there, cameo. We got, we got a cool <laughs> summer in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll say that there's at least one song from uh, the from the uh, original films that shows up, okay, and cool. you know we. Right, it's going to be a lot of nice references. But the other thing, I, and I can't remember if you guys told me this last time, but um, because I know we, we said that the, the Hillary Swank and all that stuff that that's part of the actual <laughs> where you, where you guys it's all canon stuff. Sure. Is the is the um, Jackie Chan and he, is that part of the same no. lore? No, it's a no. Different, no. different universe, different parallel universe. universe. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. For, <laughs> for any of the actors who either schedulely can't make it or who have passed away, did you guys ever talk about recasting? Was that ever on the table? Um, not, yeah. I mean, th if you're doing a different moment in life, we've established that on the show, like Johnny as a kid, you right. know, so we had a younger actor. So, um, but we're not like, but yeah, like we, we, like, we don't yeah. want to like, you know, hire a new Miyagi to play like, you know, the, a big dramatic scene yeah. that, that feel, it would feel a little inauthentic. We try to be creative with, you know, how we play those moments from the past in terms of letting them influence the future. So it doesn't feel Inauthentic. I mean, we were, you know, blessed last season to have Randy Heller come back. You know, who plays Daniel's mom. Right. As as much as we can, kind of, you know, reach to the actual past to to tell our future story. That but you helps. could, like, you know, if we flash back to him as a kid, you know, that that could be your way to, you know, to, to see, um, to to see that. So like that, like 
there's the ability to kind of like see these actors, you know, or the characters again in, yeah. in, in a different time. And and just like first the first season, I'm sure season two will have a lot of references to a lot of the the series of the films too. Because I'm curious, and again, I know you're not going to tell me anything, um, <laughs> but I'm, because I'm also I've always been very curious because in in Karate Kid two, I mean, he falls in love. I mean, sure, like yeah. Amber heals, and then the third one, she's never even mentioned ever again. But like, but so, and that's what I thought you guys did so she great. She couldn't get stuff. a visa. I think there was a, yeah, an issue. Yeah. yeah. So, well, that's the thing is because in your series, things that I said, well, they didn't even mention that stuff anymore. It's all mentioned. Like the stuff, the stuff yep. that it kind of relates through, and I'm assuming that things like that will be addressed. Yes, no doubt. Okay. There, are, there are things uh, from the original Karate Kid movies that you may have forgotten that come up right. you know it, it's uh you know we we know all those movies inside and out and uh you know all the nooks and crannies we're, we're looking in and uh you know they may show up in reference or story point yeah the first out. season referenced all three movies uh the second yeah. season does as well and then i'm assuming daniel will break ice at some point <laughs> <laughs> we hope <laughs> was there a was there any one point in Either season season one or season two, where you guys just had like an awesome friend fight about one thing <laughs> yeah. in the show, where you're just like, "No, it's going in." Uh, uh, we can't talk about. It. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we do, we do have, but yeah, we have yeah. we have passionate friend fights that are yeah. that are professional fights, but because we're friends, they they can get heated because we know uh, yeah. what each other's boundaries are, and oh, sometimes we do, but uh, but you know, we we will occasionally have a completely different idea over a moment that is so trivial to the overall series or even that episode but it just will get a moment of passion it's where it's those little details it's black man. and white yeah, and, yeah. and I'm right and you're wrong yeah. and, well, it's and like, there, I don't know how there, we're getting there's past times this where, there's times where like an idea is created for a specific like reason yeah. or an homage to a type of movie or something like that and you know, one of us really cares about that. Really right. cares about that. The, the other just like viewed it as a plot point, and then so it's like, okay, well, oh, you can't change this, or else it t- takes out the integrity of the uh, whole thing. But and we, then you end up in like these. these... I want to see this fight. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've, talked, we've talked about actually having a, a karate mat in our writers' room, yes. and it's like, let's take it to the mat. Let's see what. Uh, let's see where we're gonna. Yeah, have that. Yeah, we but try we, to have. Who would win? I don't, I don't know. know. I, I'm, I'm the biggest of the three of us, but probably the slowest. I'm the I don't more know. likely to get injured. So, <laughs> so. Yeah. it depends yeah. if like if the no mercy rule applies. <laughs> yeah. If like fish hooking and eye yeah. gouging is involved. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. one of you guys has seen the movie the most or the movies? That's it's hard to say. Probably yeah. all of us. I mean, yeah. we all had it on VHS as kids, you know, and watched it incessantly. And How and many times are we talking? Whenever I mean hundreds. hundreds? I mean, really? it's whenever yeah. like it's one of those things. Whenever it's on television, you know. And I, you know, I, I, I can speak for myself. My, my wife is the same way. Like anytime it's on television, she puts it on. And uh, is that you know, just I think, the first one though, or how many? What about uh, the other one? Specifically the first one, yeah. but the second one often. Yeah. I think for my wife, certainly the first one. For myself, I see the words Karate Kid, and I'm flipping That's it on. It. Yeah. Do you guys ever get disappointed? Because this happens with me with Point Break when you see Karate <laughs> Kid and it's the Jaden Smith one. You're like, ah, son. <laughs> no, yeah. That was a bad I, I, movie. This is not. It's not. It's just not, different. Yeah. It's it's disappointing only because of the childhood connection yes, right. that we all have. Yeah. That movie is a very fine movie. Um, but you know, it, yes, it wasn't absolutely. Ours. It wasn't ours. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. we yeah. get disappointed. It was difficult yeah, yeah. because that movie. That movie alone. I remember when they, when they announced it. I was I was absolutely one of those because you guys know how much I love this franchise that I was like, no, <laughs> yeah. don't do it. But and I say it, and I say it a million times over. It was a very well made movie. Well, it imagine the, the disappointment of the Gen Z kid who's hoping to see that Jackie Chan, right. Jaden Smith thing, right. and then turns in exactly. and, and, and fuck sees, that kid. Yeah. 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 But we, we, we have in, in Harold and Kumar 3, there's a uh, generational joke about the two karate kids. Right, yeah. right, right. And then yeah. well, the, here's the other thing. Just mentioning, I want to mention also with Billy and Ralph, because we know they, the, the whole story. If you guys haven't listened, you should go back to the one-on-one and listen to how they both got both the guys involved. It's really fascinating, a lot of fun. But now... Obviously, with the trust there too, but is there a lot more now? Are they getting more involved? It's, you know, they come in pitching stuff with their characters, and, and is there more collaborative? Or are you guys like, we got it? <laughs> they're, they're inherent. They're they, from the very beginning. They've just been very, very actively involved with 
how these characters are portrayed, the dialogue, the movements, yeah. uh, the intent. Are they um, producers? Uh, they are producers of the show, yeah. yeah. But but they are, I mean, they're the opposite of the actor who would show up and be like, all right, where are we standing? All right, over here, say these lines, great, I'm right. out. They are, we have conversations all year long about where we're going. And sometimes those are difficult places that, you know, we have to, you know, hopefully try to get them to, to see what we see, you know, that's way in the distance and why things in a micro moment might, be a little bit of a disconnect with with what their attitudes and ideas are of those characters, but it's it's a fun process watching them yeah. grow these characters and really really care about it. You hear a lot about uh, Netflix being really creator friendly. Is YouTube very similar? It's to that? it's been great. I yeah. mean, the, the very minimal notes, and the notes are always with the take it or leave it kind of attitude. Um, usually, it's just a, it's just a conversation. You know, we hear the notes and we, you know, usually give them a call or send them an email back and say, here, this is why we're, you know, why we don't want to address this note because of the long game. And then they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And oftentimes, you know, there's there's some good thoughts there that, you know, help us out. Um, hey, Riley or Cody, you guys uh, in the booth there, I'd like to get some questions from the fans. I know that they've been submitting some stuff through Facebook and Twitter. I want to have Roxy. Roxy wants to ask one more thing. Can we just pull up a few of those and maybe have a couple phone calls for the guys? Speaking of the fans, I have not met a single person who did not love this show. <laughs> I, I really have not met one. Have you guys received any negative feedback from anyone? Minimal. It's it's weird how much people like it. We know, uh, you know, when you make a second season of something, as proud of it as we are and we believe that it lives up to the first season and all that, you know, there are going to be people who now have lived with this for a year. So they're going to start saying, oh, I don't like what they did here. Right. I don't like this. Um, the, the, or they won't. You know, or they won't. We'll yeah. find, we'll find yeah. out. I mean, yeah. we didn't think the reaction would be what it was the first season. But, you know, some of the complaints have at times been like, you know, I love this, but, you know, the first season had some stuff that was a little racy and, you know, I wouldn't want to show this to my kid. There's a little bit of that stuff. And then there's a lot of like, I love the show because I could watch it with my children. Um, so, you know, it's really, you know, your own personal barometer of, you know, what you feel comfortable with. But that's that's the biggest kind of thing that we heard. And it's very minimal. Yeah, there's certain things, you know, like, I mean, like in within the 10 episodes and a half hour, like sometimes our dreams, you know, for the story outweigh like the amount of time that we have. Um, and so we've, you know, the, you know, and you we go on the, the comment section and we see like, Every single, like, you know, not positive thing there. But, I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, like, it's just been overwhelming. And, like, you feel – you just feel like, okay, the important thing is, like, people are getting the feels of Karate Kid oh, yeah. again. You know, that's what we're going for. That mixed with the comedy for an, an older audience that remembers certain things and is able to look at your past in a different way because you're an adult now. Yeah. And you see, like, oh, that asshole bully from your school had his own – like, he wasn't just this this – you know, when you're 12 years old, they're just like this. They're Hitler. That's right, it. Right, right, right. And then you learn, oh, OK, like I understand why, you know, they had a drunken, crazy father or whatever. Yeah, it's it's funny, though, because you see just, again, how the attitude in general has switched dramatically of why are they doing this to when is it coming back? Because my wife, very similar to that, to where when I first told her about the show, she's like, really, they're doing this? And we watched. She's in after episode <laughs> one. So then as we, we were waiting for our shows to come back, and she's like, when are our shows coming back? And I was like, which ones do you want? She's like, Cobra Kai? <laughs> and I was like, like, end of April, end of April. It just, it's coming out. So people are excited about it. I think we have some fans kind of either doing Facebook or uh, do we have a phone call, Cody? Not cool. Not yet? Okay, let's do, let's do Facebook. Riley, what do you got? Yeah, big question. A lot of people are wondering if you had a, in your perfect world, how many seasons do you want for Cobra Kai? <laughs> It's hard to say because, like we said before, we have so many future storylines that in and of themselves could be could constitute a whole season. But the bigger our world has grown, especially in season two, with the amount of characters that you are invested in and care about, you don't want to just brush them aside to right. rush ahead to any of that stuff. So we can't put a number on it, but it would be a lot. Yeah, because you really don't know, right? Because yeah. can be, there can be somebody like you were talking about before, and there's somebody in the background that like, well, wait a minute, that's, that's a rich story. That, it's yeah. like it's like wrestling, though. It's like yep. it, yeah. wrestling where you find that there's the Rock at one point was Rocky Maivia, and nobody knew who he was, and he had this ridiculous thing, and then he started cutting these promos like, well, that guy's a star, yeah, mm -hmm. and that could happen. As one yeah. of those, it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing soap opera in a lot of ways. Right. But I mean, there's a major through line that that is a distinct story that's connected to a you know major rivalry but there are so many soap opera elements I that can that, that stretch this thing out yeah right. 
All right, so Ryan, what else? What else you got? You guys did such a good job with the nostalgia. A lot of people are wondering if you could get your hands on another franchise that people love. What would answer. it be? <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I mean, we'll see. You know, I mean, the, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, we we don't have specific designs that we could talk about. You right. Know, I mean, you could take a. I mean, all those movies from the '80s we like. Well, you know, Flash it, it just has to be. I know they're doing Flash Gordon already with uh, with Overlord, but I. You, I you love the Gordon I love guy? the song. Yeah. Just, the, just yeah, but it, but, it, but that's the thing. I mean, no, you but that to... song gets me so pumped that yeah. it's like you want to do it almost almost because of that. Well, um, I mean, there's there's tons of stuff in the '80s that they are doing. There's there's ways that have been pitched. That I I mean, I don't know if you guys were He-Man fans. I was a huge He-Man oh, yeah, sure. fan. Yeah, huge saw that fan. That's coming back, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. There's another side of Skeletor, you know, yeah, that well, we're gonna show but, the softer side. But there was a side to him in the 2002 reboot that they did, to where you didn't learn about him. Again, this is very similar to what we're talking about here. Things like you said with, with Johnny, there, you learned why he. He was the way he was. He yeah. was he was human at one point. Right. And that happened to him, mm -hmm. and you learned the backstory of it. And I think the mythology was set up very well in that. I always thought that Masters of the Universe could be um, Lord of the Rings meets Star yeah. Wars. That's why yeah. I always thought it was. And they're going to go Thor Ragnarok with it, and, I, which is not. I, I remember as a kid, but, you know, I, all I cared about was He Man. I had the yeah. Grey Skull Castle. I had the whole thing, and then that movie came out um, with Dolph, and uh, and it was just even as a kid. I mean, my threshold was like Police Academy Five, <laughs> um, and, and I was just like, this just isn't. Good. It's not and, good, and it kind of like killed <laughs> He-Man for yeah, me. You're in for a attorney of time. for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get it. Oh, but... The key master. Get yeah, out of here. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's try. You got a phone call for us, Cody? Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Uh, hey, you are in Collider Live. What do we got? Hey, Peter Peppers, what's up, man? This is Roland Wilson in Atlanta, Georgia. What's I called on episode three, and I'm back. Nice to have you back. So, listen, you got the creators of Cobra Kai here. What do you got for us today? Oh my God, they're they're a godsend, man. Like. The show that they created, because I, the Karate Kid is like my Star Wars too, Christian. So, whatever they did, season one was a miracle. I got my nephew and my nieces into it. You know, they know dick all about the Karate Kid. <laughs> so what what y'all did was magic. Thank, Thank you. Magic. That's the season two poster. So, <laughs> <laughs> you might not know dick all, but you'll like it. <laughs> what do you What do you question, hope to see? Yeah, go question. ahead. Go ahead. Question. So I live in Atlanta. I work for the government, or I did. I just got laid off. I want to be an extra on the show. If you guys are doing anything, let me know, please. I'm All right. Well, if we, if we continue then, uh, to make the show, uh, we will. Uh, we will. We certainly have background casting that is always uh, online on Facebook. Right. Uh, that's very easy to find. Uh, I know it's a very, very rich community there of uh, filmmakers and uh, actors and background actors. So uh, we'd love to have what, you. What and, school yeah. would you want to be, Cobra Kai or Miyagi Do? Uh, Cobra, Cobra Kai, man, what you did with, 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 with Cobra Kai is amazing. Like, I, it almost turned me against Daniel, and I know that that could happen. <laughs> Karate 3, Karate Kid Part 3, nobody ever talked about it, but it's the dopest. You know what I mean? Like, and, that ending scene, when Mike Barnes is talking all that shit to him, I'm like, and Daniel gets up because you know he's scared. I mean, that's that's beautiful right there, man. The rest <laughs> of the movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Let, 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 me be, let me be quick. Christian, yeah. I want you to do stand up again. Uh, Josh McCougar, you keep being scared in movies. I love it, man. It's funny. Roxy, you're the best thing to this show. Uh, Brett, I don't know where Brett is, but he's dope, too. Brett's trying to Brian figure out where his phone is. You out. I, you're the man. I hope. Uh, creators of Cobra Kai, you keep doing your thing. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, see the, the, the excitement. He said, "Want you to keep being scared, and you keep being awesome." Okay. So, um, but the, the, that's that's what I'm talking about. You, and you guys are getting that so much. You can see it in your in your faces, George. It's like you've done something great, and it's not. And it's not even just because. Well, you made a really good TV show. No, you brought a lot. I mean, there's there's a lot of good feelings that that people feel with that because of the lessons that were taught. And what he just said, the way that you were able to switch around and make Johnny human, that like. Is Daniel going to be the bad guy at first? So we think, and it's ultimately not not the case as we find. It's, out. it's one of the things that we, that we find kind of hilarious is that like we view. I mean, Daniel Larusso is. All, we all are Daniel Larusso fans, yeah. and we believe that you know the, some of the things that he does on the show are things that are regretful for him. But most of what he's doing is well intentioned, yeah. and he's just like living his life and. Just the fact that we enter a season, uh, you know, the enter the series with, you know, Johnny and just his life is so rough and he's having such a hard time that right. everyone just wants it to work out for Johnny so bad that Daniel is by d default the villain to a lot of people. But, you know, as, as we've talked about a number of times, like for us, we like to show the good and bad in everybody on, on the show. And, you know, it's uh, they're both 
protagonists. They're both antagonists on their show. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's talk about Crease for a second here, too, because now sure. this is something you can talk about because it's in the trailer. We've seen now because I had the question last time we spoke about, well, is he a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, it is. He, and we can clear. confirm that he's a ghost. Yeah. yeah well, he's definitely he's, a ghost. He's clearly not a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you see him in the trailer. He's, he's like, a solid ghost. He's yes. a solid ghost. Not one of those <laughs> slimer ghosts. <laughs> he's he a doesn't ghost? like no. those types. He's three a baby ghost. Yeah. Exactly. All ghosts drink Coors Banquet. You know this. So in the trailer, you see that yeah. he's holding Coors Banquet, which is also that a ghost. Sense. That's yes. a confirmation that he is a Coors Banquet ghost. Now he's a he's an alive human being. Yes. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean that was the, that was the thing, and I told you, you know, I was I was curious. I I trust in you guys very much, so to where we're gonna get and 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 Martin has said the same thing. We're gonna we didn't have a chance to really learn a lot about him. We we sure. we saw what he was like, the evil villain in the first movie, and very effective. And in the you know the second one, he's in the parking lot scene. The third one to me was just like I felt like they were just trying it to. It was play. a cartoon. It yeah. was a cartoon. It was a cartoon. But this is you're we're the same thing you do with Johnny yeah. or humanizing. Well, Johnny well, had you know more built into him that was human than than Crease. I mean, Johnny had you know the beginning of the movie. He likes to say you know you know I I was an, I used to be the ace degenerate. Now I'm an ex degenerate. I got one year to make it work. Right, right. And then at the end of the movie, obviously, he gives Daniel the you know the trophy, and he kind of questions Crease in a moment. Like Johnny showed. Some Signs of not wanting to be what he was made, which gave us, you know, this beautiful, rich place to go with that character. Crease was one note, and and intentionally yeah. so. He was meant to be the big bad wolf, Darth Vader. He represented all that is yeah. dark and evil in the world of karate. But that also gives us a great place to go because you get to start asking those questions, like, is he? Does he really believe those things? You know, if he does, what made him that way? Right. Was he always like? You know, all those things that you can ask to dissect a philosophy. Uh, gives you just a plenty of yeah. runway to and go. And like where the hell he's been and why he's been gone, right? Yeah, yeah. all that mystery. Um, okay, Riley, got anything else Facebook-wise? Then we can take one more call. <gasps> okay, we'll take a call. Uh, hey, you're in uh, Collider Live. Who do we got? Hey, what's up, all? It's uh, Chris Woodburn. What's up, Chris? How you doing, brother? Hey, so you got the uh, creators of Cobra Kai. What do you got for us today? Uh, well, first I want to tell them I absolutely adored season one. I'm, I'm beyond hyped for season two, and... Now, I know I'm in the minority, but I really enjoyed Karate Kid 3. That's what and my question saying. is, my question is, where is Ter Terry Silver and Mike Barnes? Thank God you called, <laughs> yeah. because uh, we've never had that question before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, who are, these, you, who are these people you mentioned again? Uh, Ter uh, Terry Barnes? It's fun. Uh, it, it is fun. We, we, I mean, like, fun. It, it's fun having, you know, it was like, you know... It's another book from like our Old Testament. Yeah. That's like the one that you didn't learn in school as Numbers. much as the others. That's right. But but it has its but followers. There's, there's a generation. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, it, you guys referenced them. In oh, sure, sure. Well, well, yeah, yeah. well, we referenced it, but you know, it was one of those things that we always talk about. You know, Hayden has a younger brother who would watch HBO during a particular time in his childhood, where Karate Kid Three was on over and over and over again. That's kind of where he started. Yeah, and that and that that's one that like means a ton to him. And we love Karate Kid Three because it it died into Cobra Kai a little bit deeper. Right. Well, that's, right, that's the thing right. that's great. Yeah, you get deeper into the... That's where you do have some, like, backstory with Kreese and Terry Silver and... And, and yeah, there's Barnes. Well, the amount of story that you can dredge up from Karate Kid 3 is... At once ridiculous, but also very valuable if if looked at through a certain you can lens. Spin some mythology yeah. out, because it's funny that you guys is we've heard from two callers about about the Karate Kid three being their thing, and it has their audience because even <laughs> when we had Martin the other day, Martin's like, well, yeah, Cobra Kai was John, was Crease's thing. He he started it, and someone in the comments like Terry Silver started Cobra Kai, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and they're like screaming at him. But uh, but listen, season two it comes out at the end of this month. Uh, cannot wait to see it. As you guys know, anything else that we should know about the season going in, or just embrace and uh, no, no it, mercy. It's uh, no what, mercy. April twenty fourth. April twenty April fourth. All episodes yeah. drop. It's gonna be a cruel summer. It takes place <laughs> pretty much right at the end of it does. You know, how, okay. how season one ended, kind of back to future two style. Like you, you know, you're just gonna get sucked back into the the drama. So maybe watch you know All the last couple episodes from last season. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, well, we'll see you guys next uh, next time on this show when season three hits. Um, so. So thank you Definitely. very much, guys. Once again, Cobra Kai, Josh, Hayden, John, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure as always. And watch Cobra Kai. If you haven't watched season one, you are doing yourself a disservice. Go and watch that show immediately. That's the show for today, everybody. We will be back tomorrow. And Jai Courtney in studio. We're going to talk to him about Suicide Squad 2 and some other stuff he's got going on. So catch you tomorrow. Thank you.